Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Harsh Language Podcast. We are here on episode 73. Oops. 73. <laughs> Dusty's back. Where are you now? Mexico or some shit? Oh, boy. No. <laughs> In the hills of El Dorado. Nice. What, are you looking for the city of gold? Yeah. Nice. You guys remember that movie? A Disney movie? The Road to El Dorado? That shit was so good. Oh, yeah. Slightly uh, remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all back together. Yeah, our Sunday schedule's been scuffed. Yeah, yeah, we've had a hard time keeping up. But uh, we're all back here. We're back together. Episode 73. We're talking about dumb money later on in the show. Uh, I was excited to watch this movie. It was good. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. But no spoilers. Uh I've kept kind of, well, we'll talk about it later. But yeah, dumb money a little bit later. Remember, folks, check us out on our website, harshlanguage.tv, for all of our links. We are, our goal was just crushed last episode. We yeah. said, Dusty, you aren't here. We thanked Obliterated. everybody for hitting 500. We're at like 530 yeah. something now. So, yeah, we had a nice boost. Nice yeah. Nice boost in November. On the road to 1000. So, if you have not done so already, folks, consider subscribing over on YouTube. But of course, if listening to podcasts is more your thing, we're on Spotify, Apple, and all the other fucking places. But, yep. uh, but yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the analytics. I think about 30% of our long form listeners are not subscribed. Mm -hmm. Thank oh, wow. you, but yeah. maybe hit the sub button. A lot of you guys ain't <laughs> subscribed yet. So come on. I know it's fucking risky to start a relationship, but it's free. So just click that button. What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Uh, Dusty, haven't talked to you. How was your Thanksgiving, sir? Uh, it was good. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, nice and quiet. I was uh, had it with my uh, boss and uh, her daughter came down. It was just the three of us. Nice. Small, small, simple dinner, you know. Cool. Good though. Cool. Nice. And how have you guys, uh, has the weekend been this past week, weekend, treating you guys? Pretty good. I mean, um, I was supposed to get my car back, like, on oh, Saturday, sure but they delayed happened. it again. So they've just been delaying it. Wait, back this is to from back to back. the little accident you had like months yep. ago? Yep. Wasn't that a couple months ago at this point? Mm hmm. Damn. And you haven't had a car since? No, well, the car was drivable, but ah, they had to okay. order parts. Mm -hmm. So I was still kind of driving it. And then. Uh, I see. Yeah, it's been like almost, I think it's like a month and a half, maybe two months since it's been in the shop. Damn. Yeah. Christmas Delays came early for your boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah? What's got that? My, I got my Always Sunny podcast mug. My friend got it for me for Christmas. Says, cut that, cut that, cut that. Matt Black, dude. I like the Matt Black. I wish we had that option for our mug. Oh, yeah. So the glossy? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's nice, but the ooh, the Matt Black is something different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like that. Damn, that's a long time to be waiting for the fucking car, but I guess that's how it goes, right? With fucking... Yeah, delays, you know. Do they so give you a is, rental? I mean, the electronic part or something, because that's what delays all that shit easily. Uh, some car, they said a car was stuck up there on whatever machine they use when they're replacing whatever, you know? And mm -hmm. um, so they were waiting on parts for that car. I guess, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't get really any details. They just said a car got uh -huh. stuck up there. So it's just stuck up there, just vaguely. <laughs> whatever that means. Car's yeah. stuck up there, dude. We can't give you your car back. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I'm Did definitely they... going to ask for a discount, though. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Because they, they said it was, originally it was going to be two and a half weeks, and that's turned into almost two months now. So Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's way too long. And the insurance yep. company is handling it, so you really probably don't even have any say, right? Fucked up. No, no, I'm paying, I'm paying out of pocket. Are you actually? Yeah. Why, the insurance didn't cover anything? Well, I just have liability on my car. Ah, uh, okay. Um, was it your so fault, when, the accident? No, but... They had the other side has an admitted fault, so you know how that goes. There's I no do. witnesses. Yeah, having worked at an insurance company for four years, <laughs> I know very well how that goes. That's yeah, fucked up. So, yep, yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, but you could contest that. I mean, yeah, no, I got a lawyer and everything. So good, good. Fuck them. Yep. 
kind of on on fucking brand for the movie we're watching tonight. Stick it to the <laughs> fucking man, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Well, that sucks. Hopefully it gets resolved quick. Did they give you a rental at least? Nah. Oh my god. But I I didn't really, you know, I work from home, so. Yeah, but still, I mean. Yeah. What have you been up to, Dusty? Up. Oh. Dusty's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> it was a good while it lasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a good little minute. No, no, you you blacked out. It's just blacked out. There he is. He's back. Yeah. What have you been up to there, uh, mystery man? <laughs> oh, I don't even know if he could hear us. I can't hear anything. No, that's can't good. Hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. Can he even hear me on dis Discord? I wonder. No, I don't think so. But I see him looking confused. It's funny. <laughs> oh, you see it too, I guess. Dazed and confused. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, Dusty got that new laptop, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I can hear you. You back? Mm. He's there back. He's back. Yeah. I think it's the internet. I don't know. What are you, in like a fucking uh, fallout shelter or some shit? No. What are you doing? <laughs> what, are you, what are you up to? What have you been up to? Uh, What have I been working? Yeah. Just moving a lot of shit around at work right now, yeah. Right. And, uh, Get rid of some old equipment and get updated and moving other shit around. So. Nice. And you got yourself a new laptop. Yep. You like it? Uh, yeah, it's fine. I uh, needed a new laptop. My old, my other one's like 15 years old. It has a one speed Blu-ray oh, player in it. Are you gonna <laughs> Are you gonna game on it or no? Uh, no, probably not. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Just a work laptop though, but well, got gotcha. you. Right. Oh, cool. I've not installed any game software yet, League or. Um, Got to have League on it, right? League works on anything, clients, you know. <laughs> Steam or uh, what's the other one? Yep. <laughs> this, we're in a big month, boys. I don't know. Yeah, you know why? Not because of Christmas. Fuck that. The day before is coming out soon. Oh yeah, uh, that shit. Uh, allegedly, all, it comes out December seventh. Uh, oh shit. Owen just messaged me. He's like, my my flight got delayed. I'll be home 14 hours before it comes out. Are we playing it? I said, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't, right. I, how much does this game even cost? Does it even have a price yet? Yeah, I think it's probably going to be like, you know, standard early access. It, it doesn't even right? have a price. A AAA title. Oh, really? 60 bucks. <laughs> Listen, this game's we, we all know what we're getting with this game. It's not going to be good. But I think at this point, we're invested. We have to play it. <laughs> We might do like a harsh language, like non-movie day, where we just talk about the game. <laughs> but nah, that's, that's coming out here. Have you guys been watching anything? Because I haven't. Um, no. I did actually watch a movie outside of the movie that we had mm. planned for the show. What was we, all, it? we actually almost uh, talked about covering this movie. It was uh, Strays. Oh, yeah. With Will Ferrell? Yeah. Will Ferrell, yeah. Jamie Foxx. Yep, yep. Was it funny? Looked funny. Uh, it was. It had some funny parts. Not good though. Yeah. No, it was. It was. I mean, it was entertaining. It wasn't. I won't. I don't know if it was like yeah. good. I don't know if I watch it again. But it was. It was a different take on. I'd a probably pet give movie. it a rewatch. It was yeah, cool that I'd it was like a revenge. But... It's a revenge pet movie, so yeah, that was yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. It was pretty good. It was a little depressing at the beginning. Uh, really? I don't, oh, do you plan he, to watch it? Well, then? I just I know like the premise. He gets abandoned, right? But yeah, he gets dropped off. Yeah, his his owner in the is an city. asshole. Yeah, his owner is an asshole. <laughs> I mean, it sounded. But funny. it was it was cool. It was enjoyable for sure. I mean, we've talked about before. Jamie Fox, when he wants to be funny, that motherfucker is. There's almost nobody funnier than him. So I mean, yeah, it seemed yeah, it's, an it's interesting. Basically, thing. homeward bound. Oh, but my adults, except instead of just trying to get home. He's yeah. trying to get home to bite his dick <laughs> off, his owner's dick off. Yeah, Dude, bite his dick off. Every now and then I get these like nostalgia, like you're a kid from the 90s clips on TikTok, and Homeward Bound is always one of them, the ending, <laughs> when like, sh did you see that movie, Marvin? Nope. Oh my God. There's the dog's a... running through the field or whatever. No, well, at the like... end, 
So Marvin Homeward Bound is yeah. this movie from when I was a kid. Great fucking movie. It's a bad movie, but it's a great movie. If you're a kid. <laughs> and it's about these it's three pets movie. that get lost when their family moves. Oh. And it's, it's a cat, a, a, a pit bull named Chance, who's like kind of a puppy-ish. He's like... Michael J. Fox. It's put, voiced by Michael J. Fox, and he's like oh, the wow. young hyper dog. And then there's an older golden retriever, which... Oh, God, I'm going to get choked up. Named Shadow, yeah, and he's the older dog. And the movie's about the three dogs, but they talk to each other, and they're like surviving in the wilderness. They're going up against like bears and porcupines and all this bullshit, <laughs> and they're trying to find their way home. By the end of the movie, you uh, Shadow falls into like this hole, and the other two animals like go on without him, and you don't know if he, oh, uh, yeah, you don't know if he makes it out of it. And then there's this like really emotional scene at the end where the family here's the dog like chance barking in the distance and they you know a chance and the cat come running up and they have their reunions and he's like you know shadow <laughs> i'm gonna actually cry talking about it he's like <laughs> he's like where's shadow <laughs> and they think shadow's dead and he's like ah oh, he was too old like he couldn't have made it and then he comes fucking like limping out of the distance oh my god oh shit the oh, comeback it's so nice. good dude yeah, uh, it's like a little delay, you know, like I'm running yeah, out yeah, yeah. the field. You gotta watch it. I'm actually crying. I've never cried on the <laughs> podcast before, but I am. It's so good. Uh, Homeward Bound. Disney. Okay. Oh, yeah. You gotta clip me crying Incredible. for a short or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. And I think they made like a sequel. I don't remember if they did or not. God, I'm fucking like sweating Yeah, they now. did. There's at, least, there's at least one sequel. I don't know. I'm, I'm nice. <laughs> I'm like literally turning into Kevin Smith, just crying at everything. <laughs> Um, I also watched, uh, we were, I watched it with my girl and her mom and we were in a kind of like a comedy watching mood after that. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of switched and started watching some stand up stuff. Yeah. Um, we started watching first, it was Cat Williams re most recent thing, which is like from 2022, but it <sighs> actually wasn't that funny. Like, I don't there was find a couple him of funny, funny at all. No, he's hilarious. I mean, he, he used to be hilarious. His older but, stuff, yeah, but he gets a little yeah. annoying. But this uh, this one wasn't really, it wasn't really good to me. Um, it had a couple of funny things, but we actually cut it off. Did he do before. all the, like, the fucking woke bullshit? Like, oh, you can't even do comedy anymore. It seems to be what nah, a lot of the old nah. comedians are leaning into these days. No, nah, he, was, he was just talking about, <laughs> he was just talking about, he went on this, this talking about sex thing for so long. We were like, oh, my God, this is cringe. <laughs> Who's like 60 or something <laughs> like just talk about something else do you know but, yeah it was, yeah go ahead no no you, you finish i'm sorry i'm good that's that's pretty much it. i mean we, we watched a couple of youtube clips uh after that of more like modern comedians and those are really funny um compared to the cat williams thing but you know i think it was a legend you know everybody not everything has to be yeah. a, a banger um i think one of the funnier comedians I've seen as of late is uh, this dude Shane Gillis or Gillies. Have you seen him? Oh, he's funny. Yeah, I like him. Dude is so fucking funny. And he got fired from SNL before he even was on SNL. Like he got hired and then fired immediately because he made some like Asian jokes or something like that. Really? Which is fucking stupid. Yeah. But you fired him for. It? But he does. He does one of the best Trump impressions I've ever heard. <laughs> and and his stand up is so fucking funny. He has a special on Netflix right now. And a lot of it has to do with like just the last couple of years with like the political climate yeah. and oh my god, it's so he talks about his dad and like his dad getting into Fox News and it just it, a lot of the stuff he's done, he's funny. He's funny as fuck. <laughs> I really I like him a lot. Um I watched him on uh God, what's the show? Oh man. What's the what's the show? I don't even know if you guys have seen it. It's uh It was that YouTube show, right? It is a YouTube, it's like a podcast comedy show. Yeah, I don't know the name uh, of it. With uh why can't I think of this? It's like two it's like a couple, right? No, no, not the couple. It's the skinny white dude. Um mm. he's like oh, fuck. I'm gonna look it up here, but you guys go ahead. I don't know. The only podcast comedy show I know is uh Harsh language. Only murderers Killed. in the building. Oh, Kill yeah. Tony. Kill Tony. Oh, I've actually, I don't think I've heard of that. With uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. He's fucking funny. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Hinchcliffe is funny. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys, speaking of, since we're talking about comedians, have you seen this fucking weird fucking 
bone structured fucking dude who's like blowing up on TikTok because he like made a joke about like domestic uh, abuse. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I can't remember his name. He's like apparently like women think he's like gorgeous or something. He literally looks like a fucking <laughs> alien. His fucking cheekbones are all fucking big, and he's got, like that like Gaston fucking looking jawline. <laughs> And, like, all the ladies loved him, and that was, like, his base audience. And then all of a sudden, he just put out a Netflix special where, like, he decided, like, clearly in his head, he decided, like, my audience is not what, like, an audience that sh you should have in comedy. So he decided to, like, completely make them his enemy. <laughs> what? And he's, I don't know, he made a joke about, like, domestic d abuse, which, like, really isn't even that big of a deal for people to be mad at him. But it's also not yeah. funny. So I was yeah. like, what are you doing, dude? And he just like completely w went off course. I forget his name, so it's not even worth talking about, I guess. But <laughs> he just reminded me of it. I've been seeing it all over like TikTok and shit. Self-sabotage. Um, the only movies I did watch, which is funny because so last week we watched uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which was Dusty's Make Marvin Watch pick. Uh, and yeah. he unfortunately was, he slept through it. Um, <laughs> Dusty, why don't yes. you give us your... Uh, well, I was there for Sunday, but... You were there in spirit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you give your uh, little... Well, I was there Sunday when we were he supposed was there. to record. I wasn't yeah. there. Monday That's when we were true. supposed to re-record. Marvin loved That's it. Right. Um, I... Yeah, Plain Strains and Automobiles. Yeah, this is a great holiday movie. Like Dan said, it's one of the best, if not the best, really holiday Thanksgiving type movies. This is, uh, this is a movie about hubris and humility, really. Two characters who are so worlds apart and just yeah. to be humans with each other. It's, uh, it's great. You know, you can... You can kind of see both sides of it. You can see how, you know, Steve Martin would be annoyed by some of the stuff that John Candy was doing <laughs> and how John Candy is just like, just spilling beer on the bed, you know? Like, what the fuck? Uh, you know what? <laughs> we didn't talk about it during the podcast, Marvin, during the episode, but it, it's, uh -huh. he brings up a good point. That is a funny fucking scene. We mentioned the hotel scene, but we mentioned the stuff you actually right. see, which is Steve Martin, like, not having a towel and the bathroom yeah. being a mess. But that scene, and I rewound it because I thought there was, I thought it was like my copy of the movie, but it's actually edited that way that like there's a cut from the towel scene straight to them going to bed and <laughs> beer had spilled on the bed off camera. You don't even see it. And it's them yeah, reacting yeah. to it. I, uh -oh. I, I forgot to even bring that up. And it's so funny how like they didn't That's even, amazing. they didn't even yeah. choose to like show it. It's just like, he's like, I, I gotta be honest. I think he's like. You know, right. Steve Martin's like, I don't know what you would have expected putting beer on a on a shaking bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. So that was a funny choice. But uh, yeah. yeah, we uh, I gave yeah. what I give it an eight, Marvin, or I gave it. A, did I give it? No, higher? you gave it like a ten or something. No, I said personally, it's a ten. Okay. But I said it's. I'll give it like an eight. I think you gave it like an eight too. Yeah. I so think what so. what would you rate it, Dusty? Uh, I'd probably give this one a nine. It's up there. Mm. Uh, it's it really is. It's yeah, like one of the is. most perfect movies. You can't go wrong with John Candy. We need to do some more John Candy because he's got some great ones. Uncle uh, Buck. Yeah, the only other one I've seen is uh, Delirious. Yeah, Uncle Buck yeah. would be like a classic. Um, yeah. Let's haven't see seen the, that one yet. Uh, and one the Summer Rental. Summer, Summer Rental is great. One. Yeah, and then there's, an, there's another one that I really like that's sort of lesser known, but it's called, um, uh, what is it? Who, who, who Shot Harry Crumb? Where he plays the mm -hmm. private investigator. Yeah. Who's Harry Crumb? Yes. Who's it, Harry Crumb? It's yeah. such a funny fucking movie. Um, yeah. And that's not even well rated. That has like a 5.9 on IMDb. But I just, I, I remember, like, I've always loved that movie. Uh, so, yeah, we got to get some more John Candy going on. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> we were talking about, um, real before we move on from it, I just had said my favorite scene from the movie is when they get pulled over in the burnt car. And the cop is like, do you think this is road safe? And he's like, yes, sir, I do. I truly do. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you got no gauges? Nope, not a one. <laughs> I think that's my favorite scene yeah. in the movie. What is yours, Dusty? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. There are, there's so many good ones. Like the just the, some of the quip one-liners. Like, you said we're going the wrong way. How the hell do they know oh, we're yeah. waiting for it? <laughs> All right. Right. <laughs> Oh, Cool Runnings is a great movie too, with him. Oh, I have seen yeah, Cool Runnings. You have with the yeah. Bob, the Jamaican bobsled team. Yeah, yeah, it's a great one. Um, yeah. So, uh, and so uh, coincidentally, I watched another um, uh, 
movie with John Candy in it. I don't know if I mentioned it when we recorded that night, Marvin, but uh, with a friend of mine, I watched Home Alone. It was actually yeah, you her, mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, it was her first time watching it, also written by John Hughes. Um, and then we decided to watch the second Home Alone. So that's the only real things I've watched this week was Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. I don't know if you've seen both of them, Marvin. I've, you've got to yep. have seen one of them. I've seen both. I think, honestly, for my money, Home Alone 2 is better than the first one. I think so. Like, I don't know. I mean, know... they're both good, but yeah. Home Alone 1 stands alone or on its own because it's just a great movie, but the second one's a little bit better. Yeah, I don't know why, because it really rehashes a lot of the same jokes from the first one, if not all of them, really. <laughs> right. It's like essentially the same fucking movie, but I just, I don't know. It's just uh, maybe because well, it just adds that dynamic because he's in New York and he yeah. doesn't know his way around and they're in New York and they don't know where he is. So like his mom <laughs> trying to find him in the middle of New York, it seems like yeah. futile. Yeah. But. Probably has like obviously a little bit more personal to me because it's in New York and like. When I was growing True. up, like the first time you go to, you start going into the city as like a younger kid, like without your parents and stuff, like this is the New York that you envision is like, this is probably the New York that everybody envisions. Like maybe when you came for the first time where it's like seedy <laughs> at night and like fucking random homeless people fucking <laughs> talking to you and fucking decrepit taxi drivers and all that shit. Um, but, Crazy uh, bird ladies. Nah, not too many homeless. I was... I was in Manhattan, so I no. guess. I mean, they were I saw like them. one, literally yeah. one, the entire time I was there. Yeah, you go into the. Have stuff. you guys seen Home Alone three? Yeah, it's terrible. You know, I actually lo loved that movie as a kid. I had I had it on uh, tape. Really? And I remember watching it a lot. Yeah, I I, I might have even watched Home Alone three before watching the first two. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, that, I love that movie. That was like a homesick movie that I used to watch because it used to be on like illegal pay per view when I was like home, <laughs> from, home from school or something. Yeah, and I'm on three. Yeah, it's a whole different cast and it's like I don't know. This it's kid, all different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This kid has like a fucking nuclear chip or something on his. But the tra the traps are still pretty good. In that yeah, movie. yeah, the traps were good in that. I remember that. You know, Scarlett Johansson was in that movie. Was she? That's his uh, sister. Oh, I do not remember that. Look her up. It looks crazy uh, looking at it now. That's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I, that has to be the first movie I've ever seen her in, not even knowing it was her. Oh, god damn. She is young as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that crazy. kid looks familiar, too, and I don't know if he looks More familiar you know. just from this. Probably just, I don't, I mean, it's possible he was in something else. Oh, he I was home with you. the chicken pox. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And then, like, one of the crooks gets chicken pox by the end of the movie, right? Or something <laughs> yeah, like that? I think so. What else was this kid in? It can't be. I'm just remembering him. Alex from this. Pruitt. I really think I am just remembering him from this movie. Oh, Max Keebles? He was in Max Keebles, big movie. Big yeah, move, I mean. I don't remember that shit. Do you don't remember Max Keebles' big move? Maybe I, that was after I remember your time. The No, I remember the name of it, but I don't think I've ever watched it. No, well, I mean, I was in high school by then, so I for sure didn't watch it. But I do yeah. recall, like, the name. Hmm. He did the voice of Big Arnold of and Hey Arnold. I didn't know that. What? Yeah. How is that possible? At least in a TV TV series, two episodes, TV miniseries, one episode. Oh, maybe it was like a younger version of Hey Arnold then because Hey Arnold maybe. came out, he would have been too young to sound like Arnold, I feel like. I mean, Hey Arnold anyway. was popping back, in, back when I was a kid. So. That was the 90s and he's... Yeah. Well, he's he's a little older than me. He's 34, so. Yeah. Well, that's the only thing I've watched. How about you, Dusty? You been watching anything? Uh, I watched a couple of movies. Uh, I, went, I actually saw Wish at uh, the theater with a friend and some kids. Um, Wish? Yeah, it's a oh, Disney movie. Oh, the Disney movie, movie that's it bombing. Feels like, well, I mean, it's not a terrible movie. No, it's if, bombing, it no, in the box like office. A, Financially, it's oh, bombing. Oh, yeah. Back to back it, it felt like they Disney. wanted to make like a hundred year anniversary film and they because the story nothing's really original there's just a million easter eggs in it, it just feels like oh, a swag felt like a long advertisement for disney almost like because you get a lot of the references but it's just there's just i don't know the story's not that original so it's okay but well that seems to be the theme with that. disney huh these days is that like they're just their stuff marvel included star wars mostly 
It all just feels uninspired. Yeah. That's what I've been hearing about this is that it's just like kind of, it's got a 5.9 on IMDb. Like it's just. Yeah. And you know what? I don't know if you guys watched it. I sent you um, the Kevin Smith podcast, uh, Fat Man Beyond, a couple days ago. It was their last episode. And they were talking about this very thing. I clipped the exact moment. But again, I don't, I don't know if you guys watched it, but they, um, Mark made a really good point, his co-host, that he was like, you know what? He's like, I don't think that there is a, I don't think there's Marvel fatigue. I don't think there's comic book fatigue. He's like, I think with Disney specifically, there's like a Disney fatigue. And I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting because they really do like dominate pop culture at this point. Like they've got two of the biggest IPs on the planet, Star Wars and Marvel. Then they got their own fucking IPs <laughs> that they're pumping out. And he was yeah. like, you know what? He's like, honestly, he's like, it's not, he's like, I bet you the majority, because he, he was comparing it to other movies. And it's like, you can't say that like, people aren't going to the theaters because Oppenheimer and Barbie prove otherwise, right? Yeah. And he was like, it, that just goes to show you that when there's good marketing and something new and fresh and different out there, people will yeah. go see it. And he's like, the, he's like, the other part of it is that Disney, they've conditioned people to now know that like, well, I don't have to go to the theater to see this. I could just wait. It'll be out on Disney Plus in a month. And it's perfectly fine watching it at home. So why are people going to go to the theaters to see these movies, especially when they're not super great? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. It's a good point. And I agree. Boom. It's mid fatigue. <laughs> Yeah, like Marvin said, mid fatigue. All right, so you um, saw Wish. What I also else watched did you Monarch, watch? Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Uh, I heard that's oh, pretty yeah. good. Four episodes are out. It is actually yeah, pretty good so far. I heard that's good. And on the Godzilla topic, I heard this minus zero movie is fucking phenomenal, and I can't. I actually wait heard the same it. thing. Yeah. The the headline I saw earlier today when I was perusing on my phone was the greatest Godzilla movie ever made. So yeah, it's big because there's damn. Like, 30 out of them. Dude, that's what I heard. And I think it's a remake of one of the old school Godzilla. It's actually the 37th in the Godzilla franchise. Um, and uh, it's made by Toho Studios, which they're like the ones that have been doing all the Godzilla stuff all these years. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think... I feel like it was like a remake or reimagining of one of like the older Godzillas, but I had heard this is, I've heard nothing but good things about this. And I also heard that like, they make Godzilla like, he's like a straight fucking villain in this. Like he, he, there ain't no like gray area with Godzilla. Cause in a lot of movies, Marvin, he started out as, I don't know how familiar you are with God, Godzilla, but he started out as like the fucking destructor, the monster. But yeah. like, over the years trying to get more stories in there he fucking had a kid and there's some jokey ones and like he <laughs> became like a hero like he defends japan from like other monsters who were bad this movie brings him back to his roots like he's fucking just a fucking monster and that's it nice um, i'm excited to watch this one yeah yeah okay so this took oh, the, in uh the godzilla kong trailer came out did you guys watch that i didn't watch that yet um, but just real quick, I so yeah, he the this the script is original, but it takes uh, influence from the original 1954 Godzilla film, um, another one called just Godzilla, and then Mothra and King Ghidorah, giant monsters all out of tech. So those are like the three films that he kind of pulled inspiration from. But nevertheless, I really want to fucking watch this. I hope it comes out soon so we could actually review it here. Um, I did yeah. not watch that trailer, um, but Monarch is good. I, I want I've wanted to get it start watching yes. it what's the deal Monarch with the four episodes i've heard this now about like five different shows i've heard so that released only a couple of episodes they released two episodes out the gate and then one episode a week so it's been out for three weeks. Oh, okay i'm mistaken then because i heard the crown the new season of the crown dropped like a couple of episodes and then sees the rest of the season is going to pick up like a couple months from now and then people were pissed at this the second season of um uh what's the animation on um amazon with the superhero what's that called again invincible invincible, invincible. apparently yeah. invincible did the same thing they're chopping up the season it sounded like it's well amazon's coming. pretty 
their standard has always been to drop three episodes and then let you watch it the rest of it on a weekly basis. Well, no, no, no. The week to week is over. I think they're like the second part of the season is down the road. And they were taking like a right. lot of heat for it. And the creators were like, oh, I don't know what the fuck was they were saying. Oh, so they drop half and then they drop yeah, yeah, yeah. half later. I mean, we're still that's... waiting on the second half of Yellowstone. Well, yeah. <sighs> I don't think I that's about that fucking show. Jesus Christ. Well, speaking of Yellowstone, have you been watching Bass Reeves? Yeah. Is it good? I have been watching that, too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. I got to pick that. I got a lot of show watching to do, but I'm glad Monarch is good. I've heard it was, I heard like the whole dynamic. Well, it's Apple. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Apple's got some good stuff. Yeah, except for that other show. For All Mankind just recently came back. Wasn't that other show? I have not watched that yet, yeah. For All Mankind is great. Wasn't that alien show that we hated on Apple? Invasion is back. Invasion, yeah. Wasn't that yeah. Apple, though? That was Apple. Might have been the only thing we didn't mm-hmm. like from Apple. Yeah, so far. I'm going to watch the second season. I might I might thug it out just to see what it th- see see if it improved. I just want to see what happens, yeah. But that first season was boring, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I'm curious about how it turns out, too. I don't know. I heard it was kind of boring out the gate, but it ended pretty good, so I don't know. I, heard I was the... waiting for all the episodes to come out. Yeah. I uh, I was I was hearing that the dynamic between well not between because they they play the same person past and present but I heard the whole like the way they utilize Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell is like very good in that show. It is yeah um, yeah I like the duality of the timelines it's really good yeah so I definitely plan on watching that uh, but speaking of trailers I did not watch that trailer but I did watch the trailer for uh, Fallout did you guys see that. Mm-mm. Yeah, Fallout coming to Amazon. No, it's a show. I think coming to Amazon. Oh, the show! I do remember hearing about this. Yeah, no, John... I didn't see the trailer. Yeah, it looks good. I think it's going to be good. I mean, Jonathan Nolan is doing it. Who he made? He's obviously Christopher Nolan's brother. Not that that means much, but he works with his brother a lot. Um, he did. Going to be based on the Fallout game, or is it going to be something totally different? It's based on the Fallout universe. So she, the Fallout main character, universe. she's like a. What do they call them? Like a she's part of a vault or whatever the fuck i don't know mm, yeah um, i don't remember yeah i know what you're saying though yeah but uh yeah he oh, made boy. We- he made westworld and westworld was great <laughs> so i think this oh. will be good it looks good people are crying woke though because it's uh a female main character the game's never had a female main character it's like uh, shut the fuck up like jesus <laughs> uh oh my god so that looked good i'm kind of excited for that um and then I also, did you guys see the trailer for Furiosa? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait for that shit. I, 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 I love Mad Max. Yeah, yeah. Now, is yep, this a spinoff or a sequel? Oh. Uh, they're I'm all set sure. in the same universe, per se. So uh, it's a spinoff, I think. Yeah, but I don't wasn't. Think it's a direct sequel. Wasn't Fury Road a direct sequel to the original Mad Max? I don't remember. Uh, I think it was a sequel to the sequel. I want to say I don't know if it, I I don't remember the. Gotcha. Okay. Well, whatever. How they lay all those movies out. It's been a while since I've watched any of them. Okay. <laughs> well, and real quick, yeah, uh, going back to the woke thing uh, <laughs> about Fallout. Yeah, yeah. You create your own character yeah. in Fallout, guys. Well, no, not in Fallout Four. Don't you create your own character? I don't think so. Well, in so. Fallout 3, you can create a guy or a girl. Maybe so, you do. I don't know. I remember from Fallout 4 is that you don't even like, your character doesn't have Fallout a voice. Fallout 4 was, I didn't finish Fallout 4 because it was fucking boring and trash, so I couldn't I tell. I thought it was boring, too. Three and Fallout 3 and New Vegas, though, were amazing. So. That motherfucker Preston's still in my town fucking waiting for me to help another settlement. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so that was really it for the week. I didn't, think, I didn't see... I mean, I know there was a bunch of other trailers that came out. There's a couple of movies that I'm excited about. Um, I sent you guys um, the trailer for that uh, horror movie coming, uh, Night Swim. That looks pretty fucking good. Did you guys watch that? Night Swim? Yeah. Wyatt Russell's uh, in that. No. Oh, it looks good. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. It it looked pretty cool. This dude, uh, 
Don't know any movie the director's done, but I don't know. This looks good. <laughs> I hope it's good. You know me. I love my horror movies. Yep. Carrie Condon's in it, and uh-huh. she's great. So, Oh, nice. Um, she was in Banshees or what? Yep. That, was that her? Yep, okay. yep. She was the sister. Uh, apparently, the trailer dropped for Godzilla X Kong, which I didn't even know dropped. Uh, the New Empire. <laughs> and... Uh, I did see another trailer too for uh, Ted the Peacock Show. Have you, you are you aware of this happening? Yes, it's like a prequel show to the Ted movies. It's like him as a kid when like the bear first comes around. Right. Oh, correct. Yeah. So it's like them growing up together. Yeah, I might give that a shot. Yeah, that should uh, be interesting. Give it a shot. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of stuff coming down the pipe now. We'll have to wait and see. Well, Sorry. yeah, I mean, the day, like, literally the day after the fucking right, the strike ended, the actor strike, like, all these fucking trailers started dropping. Right. right. Did we even talk about the trailer for Frozen Empire? I think we did, right? Ghostbusters? Frozen. Mm. I think we talked about it. Uh, did we? Yeah, I think we did, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we did. You we guys would have talked did, about did. it last week. No, no, a week before. Because sure we talked we about how I hadn't watched, yeah, hadn't yeah, yeah. seen the first one yep. and all that. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. You oh, right. Yeah. yeah, that's probably on the top of my uh, list. So, did we talk about the Andor leak trailer or no? We didn't. No, that happened this week. Yeah, mm. Andor season two. The trailer leaked. Did you guys watch the leak trailer that I sent you? Yes. It was nothing. It was just like a teaser, yeah. but it looks like It was like, a teaser, yeah. yeah. Looks like everybody's returning. Oh, that's all I need, yep. I don't I don't know why they're doing a second season and I know we talked about this when we were covering it, the first season. It doesn't really You know need, why. I mean, I know why, but it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't need a second season. So ho- no. hopefully it's just as good. I, I, yeah, that's the thing. I think it every will time be. you do, every time that's the problem. Every time there's another season, <laughs> there's a chance you yeah. just fuck it all up. There's that chance. It is. It's there. But I don't know. When if you t- make something great, just fucking leave it. Why not? Yeah, I don't know if Tony Gilroy is doing it. Um, oh God, I'd imagine he is. I would imagine. Yeah, they're gonna spend every expense to bring back the people that are doing good stuff. Yeah, um, you would hope so, right? But like, how many seasons of this show are we gonna get? Like, it like it's gotta end at all some point. All the way point. up to all the way up to that one. They Rogue, to Rogue One. one. I, mean, I guess. Yeah. Uh, they could. It was like, what's the? I mean, is there? Yeah. A, I mean, I don't know. Do we need to see all of that build up and oh, actually, backstory and all that. I don't know if we need to see all that. Okay. Well, hang on. In August, Tony Gilroy did say that this second season will be the final season. They started nice. shooting last month. We're halfway. We will finish shooting in August. So they're okay. So that should be that should be coming out soon, I'd imagine. And yeah. also, he was the guy who was like, I don't yeah. give a fuck about Star Wars. I just want to tell a good story. So, That's true. So it'll probably be good. As long as yeah. he keeps yeah, that, yeah. that attitude. Right. <laughs> but uh so what's been going on in the news this week, Dusty? Tell us. Okay, um, I'm gonna burn through this as fast as I can. I guess still got some stuff on here. I think it was from last burn week. them and turn them. Um, they're, st- <laughs> they're still voting to finalize the deal for the SAG after strike. Um, hmm. Some are still pretty against it. The uh, balloting ends, I think, Tuesday. Where Speaking the of, the deal will either be ratified or rejected, and it's closer than many are expecting. So it should be ratified, but we'll know Tuesday. Did you see, I don't know if it's in your news piece, but did you see that, uh, like, Nicolas Cage, what he, he's been going around doing press for this new movie that he's in, and uh, he was talking about the, <clears throat> um, his appearance in Flash. Did you oh, see yeah, his comments? he said some things about, yeah, he, he wasn't, yeah, because he the didn't, whole CGI thing. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't say. What he was performed wasn't what it was on screen. He no. didn't say anything disparaging, but he was talking about it from the perspective right. of like, this is why actors are so concerned about AI. So essentially, Marvin, just to catch you up, I don't know if you remember us talking about it, but the end of the Flash movie has a sequence where like every person who ever p- was supposed to play Superman or played Superman appeared. Right, and right. the Nicolas Cage appearance was is a pretty big deal for fans because he was supposed to be in a Tim Burton Superman. Like there's a whole documentary about it. They did <laughs> test screenings for it. They had his suit all made. Um, 
Kevin Smith wrote the script. One of the producers is like a funny, it's like a famous funny story because the producer of the film was like dead fucking set on Superman fighting a giant robotic spider for some reason in the movie. <laughs> so the much fuck? so that when the Superman movie fell through, the producer went to make another movie, which is Wild Wild West with Will Smith. Which also happened to spider. feature a giant fucking spider. Holy so, shit. So this dude's just like obsessed with giant spiders. <laughs> so anyhow, Nicolas Cage shows up in this film fighting the giant fucking spider. But he was saying in, <laughs> in this press thing that like, oh, I was on set for like eight minutes maybe. <clears throat> and they told me that like, oh, you're witnessing the end of the universe. And Nicolas Cage was like, well, he's like, I was told what I was doing in the scene. And like, I tried to express that as best as I could. He's like, but when I saw the film, that's not what I was doing. I was fighting a spider. He's like, I was never told about this spider. And he's like, you know, I, he's like, I love Andy Muschietti and his wife, and I think they're great. And this, that, and the other thing, I'm not saying anything bad. He's like, I'm simply saying that, like, what I shot, what I showed up to do was not what ended up in the movie. And they never wow. told me about it. And wow. that shit probably that's... happens all the fucking time. So that's why yeah. the AI argument is so concerning for these actors because it's like you have their likeness and shit and they could just do anything with it. Like, that's crazy. At least call the guy and be like, hey, listen, we know you shot this one thing, but we're going to do another thing so you can be prepared for it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think that's why some are still all against the, the deal that they've, they've got going that where they might ratify it or reject it on Tuesday. We'll find out. Right. Wow. So. Yeah, and I guess the Writers Guild of America West provided a statement to the headline saying they notified Amazon Studios that their failure to recommence a number of writing rooms after the strike is a violation of the strike termination agreement between the WGA and the AMTPT or PTP. You know, they ended their strike like two or 118. It was 118 days. It was like two months ago they ended the WGA strike. So they're already telling Amazon that part of the deal was you get a you know, turn shit back on, let's go, and they haven't, so they might sue them for that. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, nice. But yeah. On to, uh, I guess we'll do WB. Uh, Francis Lawrence uh, was doing an interview with Hollywood Reporter regarding the Hunter Games and decided to talk about Constantine 2 a little bit. <laughs> Um, how regime changes killed the sequel's chances. Um, yeah. He says no, but we've had many obstacles. Uh, me, Keanu, and Akiva Goldsman have tried over the years to wrangle some control of the character again. Because it's been handed over, I think NBC did a TV show, which was very good. And J.J. Abrams is going to try and do something. And then the regime of DC <laughs> changed, and they've got their plans. So that's really kind of what slowed all this stuff down, but apparently it hasn't hasn't changed plans for Constantine 2, so they're still working on it. Uh, Apparently it's in pre-production. Yeah, it is. He says, luckily we managed to wrangle some control and started working on some ideas for Constantine 2, which we're really excited about. It's still the very beginning as the strike put it on hold for a little bit, so we're probably going to get it back together after Thanksgiving and dig back in and try to crack it. So did it he happen like to they should be all in. Did he happen to talk about the thing that I'm probably the most excited for currently on this earth? And that is the Bioshock show that he's developing or movie. Ooh. He's uh, I don't know if he talked about it. I didn't read the full interview. He's That's directing it. He's directing yeah. it. And Michael Green, who was recently hired by Marvel, who wrote Logan and Blade Runner 2049, he's writing it. Oh, I'm so excited. My only, my only like hesitancy is that it's for Netflix and Netflix is like, it could be good or bad, but oh man, am I excited for that? Please just don't fuck it up. Like it's all I ask. I know it's all, yeah. I know it's a big ask, you know, wanting a, a, a video game adaptation to be good, but. Oh yeah. That's, I don't know, but it's starting to get better. I mean. Are they? We'll see. Uh, you didn't like the uh, Last of Us. I mean, I was all right. Yeah, you're right. That was <laughs> good. It was they're good. starting to get. They're Speaking to get of, better. I mean, they were all bad all the time, but they're starting to get better. Speaking of game adaptations, I don't know if you saw this, but apparently, what's his name? Uh, who uh, the fuck is the guy's the actor's name? I can't even. Th uh, Chris Pine 
apparently he said something of like, mm-hmm. yeah, of course we're doing a sequel to Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> like just out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's in there. Chris Pine is confident Dungeons and Dragons sequel is going to happen. He's heard rumors, but nothing's confirmed. But apparently talks have been going on. So, yeah. Big fan of that movie was great. Uh, yeah, Mark was, Hamill, he says he will no longer play the Joker. Saw that. Because uh, Kevin Conroy without Batman crime has no punchline. Oh. Was what he said. And I, it makes sense. I mean, those are two old, you know, one rest in peace to one, and the other one's been around for so long. That I saw an interview with him. Mark Hamill, after, after he was Luke, he was, he was the fucking yeah. he was the Joker. Yeah. I, I saw an What's interview that? with him where he said, like, me and like he's like i never even had to like if he's like if i was approached to do the joker voice for something my first question was well is kevin doing it and if kevin was doing it like yeah i'm on board if not then i was like nah let somebody else do it because they had such like a good chemistry together apparently so i could understand why he would want to retire it yeah no they had great chemistry yeah it's that was a, a duo, but yeah, I would, yeah, I would, I, I get it too. I would want to as well. Troy Baker's okay, not too no, bad as let, the Joker. Let the new, yeah, yeah. There's Fuck been some Mark good ones. <laughs> wow. So, and I guess you guys, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, this. You guys probably talked about the Superman Legacy casting last last week, right? Sure uh, did. Mm. Fact or sh- we have we have a fucking still, <laughs> Rachel Brosnahan as Lois. Yeah. Well, that we talked about months ago when they, that came out, but we talked yeah, about Skyler, Jimmy Olsen and... Skylar Gazzano is Jimmy and Sarah Sam Powell, of course, him. Whom, and, yeah, by was, the way... And Holt. Yeah, Nicholas Holt is Lex. I mentioned that kid. He is the perfect <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Olsen. Like, oh, right, yeah, that yeah. guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be great. Did you watch Santa Clarita Diet? Yeah, I fucking him? love that show. So we talked good. about it. I got you yeah, into that show. Week? Yeah, we talked about it last week. But I got oh. you into that show, don't you remember? I told I'm the one that told you to watch yeah. that. Give me yeah, some it was fucking great, credit. They canceled Marvin. it. Put some credit on my name. Yeah, they well, fucking canceled it. I, I mean, I don't know why people weren't watching it. That show was. I thought it was fucking it was hilarious. So funny, yeah. especially what's his name in the head? His head, like the uh, the dude playing Hal Jordan now. Um, can't think of his name. He's fucking funny in that shit. Nathan yeah. Fillion isn't. Too yes. bad. Uh, yeah. Wasn't Drew Barrymore? Uh, what, what do they call her when she was still working when they were doing the strike? What's the uh, what's the what's the slur? Oh, because she I don't not know. Skid, scab. Sla- scab. scab. She's a fucking scab. Sadly, was she? She was still doing something, wasn't she? I thought it was like a whole thing. Her show, maybe. I yeah, don't know. she was still doing her show. The talk show, writer. right? She was. Yeah, had they they had scab writers or she was doing her own writing. I don't know how they did it, but they did it with the guild writers. Yeah. No good. She took some scab took sympathizer. Some <laughs> <laughs> well, the last piece of WB news that I have is uh good news for Dune 2 is bumped up two weeks. Uh <laughs> two coming out weeks. March first, twenty twenty four. Yeah, it's pretty should soon be out actually right now. Yeah. But, well, it should be out. They should be out right now. It was coming out in November, I think, is when it's supposed to release, but they bumped it to next year. And right. Uh, so yeah, we got a two week bump on that. So it'll be be out in the spring, beginning of the spring. So I'm looking forward to that one. Nice. Yeah. On to Disney. Uh Tom Holland so was on Collider, uh talking about another Spider Man, whether or not he would do it. Uh, did you guys talk about this last week? I don't know if this is uh, I, mm, I think we did. What did we talk? No, we didn't talk about how Spider Man. No. Okay. Okay. So he basically said, he says, all I can say is that we've been actively engaging in conversation about what it could potentially look like for a fourth rendition of my character, whether or not we can find a way to do justice to the character is another thing. I feel very protective over Spider-Man. I feel very, very lucky that we were able to work on a franchise that got better with each movie and got more successful with each movie, which I think is really rare. And I want to protect his legacy. So I won't make another one for the sake of making another one. It will have to be worthwhile for the character. Um, so yeah, that's what everybody says until that fucking Disney yeah. check is being until dangled in front comes. of their fucking heads. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, fe- bonus, kids. I kind of feel bad for him because, like, obviously, Sony's plan is to eventually get Tom Holland into their Spider Verse, and apparently, there's rumors that he's in. He's got like a cameo in the in the Madam Web movie or some shit, mm. and like I don't know. <laughs> It, it would be. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know if they could get him to do any of the side movies unless he had a contract to do cameos. Uh, you know, I, uh, usually that's in the contract. So. Well, I don't know. It would be who fucking Marvel to like do anything possible to keep him around because like they're struggling. And, you know, one of the best ways well, to fucking I mean, yeah. you lean on your biggest Is it heroes. Up to Marvel, though? What? Is it up to Marvel? No, but clearly they have some sort of sway over the matter. Like, Sony's still making fucking money. Oh, yeah, but I think Sony wants to pick their Spider Man. I don't know. Marvel. Maybe. Well, has so much sway on it. But I don't know. Either way, I want my uh, but, fucking. Uh, yeah. Speaking I want of the... my Spider Man Daredevil team up. <laughs> The Disney, the Disney fatigue and the mid fatigue. Dave Filoni was just recently named uh, chief creative officer of Lucasfilm. I saw that. Um, Ooh. Yeah, he's exploring a possible second season of Ahsoka. Nothing's confirmed. Just looking at it, uh, he basically sick. weighs in on the narrative level for uh, all the Star Wars stuff while Kathleen Kennedy continues to leave Lucasfilm as president, run day to day operations. So Speaking they're of, they're letting Filoni cook, Dan. Well, <laughs> uh, speaking of our our boy uh, Ryan Airy got fucking some flack over on Twitter because he, in response to a Dave Filoni quote, Dave Filoni was saying how everybody has the force. Some people are like the force is an energy that lives and moves within everybody, and that as yeah, explained in the prequel trilogy, yeah, as explained in the prequel trilogy, and he's like because Filoni is like. He is like the keeper of George Lucas's fucking ideas. Like he's the he's the fucking guy that that like <clears throat> was privy to all of that apparently. But he's anyway, got the storybook, yeah. So he said this, and then uh, what's his name, Ryan Airy on Twitter was like, "This is dumb," and everybody was like flaming him because they're like, "What's well, not fucking dumb?" Like this has been explained numerous times in the Star Wars franchise, even in the yeah. original ones. It's like th it's not. The force is not something that is just exclusive to certain people. Some people are just born more well, sensitive yeah. to it. So right. basically what yeah, Dave you're, Filoni you're, was saying. Your predisposition to being more fluent in the force right. is varied. Dave Filoni was right. saying that anybody could learn to use the force. It just comes easier to some. And that makes perfect sense. Just like if I were to pick up a guitar, maybe it comes easier to me than it does to Marvin or vice versa. That's like right. That's just how skill yeah. works in life. Like wh why would that's that be any different? Because you know why these old fanboys cannot move on from the fact of the very special, special boy, boy, Luke Skywalker. I even said that to somebody in our comments. I love that saying that phrase. Special yeah, boy is so funny. Cause it's true. Like <laughs> somebody in our YouTube comments with the short that we had about black Superman, he was like, flaming ray for being a mary sue and like she picked up the fucking force in two days i'm like luke did the same thing what are you talking about <laughs> luke became a jedi in like a week on fucking uh with yoda like give me a fucking break like it's not there's no it's no different i have my own criticisms of ray as a character but it's not <laughs> about the fact that she learned the force quickly you have a fucking two hour window to tell a story like what the fuck do you want right yeah like, jesus christ <laughs> fucking nerds, bro. They drive me crazy. <laughs> uh, Robert Kirkman <laughs> confirms Stephen Young's casting in Marvel's Thunderbolts. Uh, he's playing Sentry in the movie. Robert Kirkman? So we, yeah. What does he have to do with this? Yeah, he's... Uh, he said my good friend Stephen Young is playing Sentry in a movie. He oh, went for okay. Fitting. Oh, so Robert Kirkman, like, leaked this news. He just leaked it. Well, he, he, well it was already reported. I'm pretty yeah. sure I talked about oh, it a okay. couple of weeks back, but he basically confirmed the casting, yes. Gotcha. <laughs> nice. I, I don't remember the, the who, who he said, who, who in reference to where he said it, but he said, yeah, my friend Steven is playing Sentry in a movie. He went for costume fitting, so that was basically confirmed it. Uh, Fantastic Four. I'm sure you guys talked about this a little bit. Um, yep. This is probably something you didn't talk about. Mad Mads Mikkelsen is confirmed to have talked about taking on the Doctor Doom role. Uh, apparently, Killian Murphy Ooh. is their top choice. Hold on a second. Uh, Hold on. Crab Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Chris Christopher Abbott and Jamie Dornan both reportedly screen tested for the role of Reed Richards, according to Jeff Snyder, our boy. Apparently that did not go well. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Adam Driver were also reported to have been 
uh, now I need to stop you. That, but we also have <laughs> we have the Pedro Pascal rumors that are still going on. These people are so, all Marvel characters. Wait, did you say Killian Murphy is going to be Doctor Doom? Yes, that would be great. Would it? He's yeah. Marvel's top. Yeah, Marvel's top choice for Doctor Doom. Right Dude, now. Killian Murphy is a fucking. Sporting. Oh yeah. But yeah, hold on. But he's no, 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 no. But hang on a second. Killian Murphy. Yeah. Jake Jake Gyllenhaal has been a Marvel character, yes. Adam Driver has not been a Marvel. Character. No, but Jake Gyllenhaal was fucking not just a Marvel character. He was fucking uh, a Mysterio. Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, Mysterio. Oh. Yeah. And also, fucking Mads Mikkelsen was Cassilius in Doctor Strange, the first one. Yes. Okay, so th- th- there's no chance. You know what? I mentioned to this you in that Discord. We. Because you know who's been dropping all this shit? That dude that you follow on Twitter. What's his name? My Time to Shine or whatever? Uh, so, well, this wasn't from my so time. So you're saying he's wrong. From Jeff Snyder. Jeff who, Snyder, who, he's the guy. Like that guy's said. a fuck. No, fuck that guy. Because he's no, the he's one. He's been right on some things and he's been wrong on some things. He's also the one that leaked. Um, Let me tell you something. I'm on to him. He's the one that leaked <laughs> this, this female Silver Surfer thing. And I swear Ooh, to God, uh, it's only for clicks. And, because this motherfucker, if you look at his Twitter... He is not, he's one of those like anti-woke fucking people. He was on Twitter defending uh, fucking Nazis and shit. He's like, listen, I'm not saying Nazis were good, but I'm just telling you, they have a right to speak. He's like that free speech fucking guy. So that just tells me he's like on this fucking, he's trying to get those anti-woke clicks. That's a hot, That doesn't make him not right an now. insider and not having proper news sometimes, though. Yeah, I know. It's I mean, true, maybe, but if he has a, mo- he if he has a but, motive. Let me tell you, know. you something. Okay, I mean, everybody's got a motive. I've been thinking That's about fair. this. Let's let's break this down, right? Because we talked about this when the whole Pedro Pascal thing came out. If it's true, it's clear it's yeah. because he's like the hot guy, right? Everybody likes him, everybody wants him. He's not going to fucking agree to do however many years of films. That's the first thing. Second thing is like you're going to sit there and tell me that they're trying to fucking cast Pedro Pascal. Killian Murphy, fucking Anya Taylor-Joy, like they're just every fucking a lister in Hollywood is going to be in Fantastic Four. Like, give me a fucking break with this. <laughs> did, shit. You, did you see who's uh, going to play Galactus? Yeah, fucking what's his name? Uh, Javier Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem, or what's his name? Fucking yeah. uh, uh, um, who's the Mexican actor from fucking Desperado? Come on! Oh right, uh, Antonio Banderas. Uh, yes, Antonio he was like the first. Javier rumor. is probably, I think, yeah. Um, but the whole Jeff Snyder thing, the Andy Taylor Joy thing, uh, that was that was first reported by Daniel Rickman, not Jeff Snyder. Jeff Snyder's followed it up, saying it. Now he could have been jumping on the bandwagon or just re-reporting it. I don't know if he has his own insider news, but Andy Andy Taylor Joy uh, Silver Server thing was first reported by somebody else. Daniel I may Rickman. be coping hard, but all I want to say on the matter is this: like, please. All these, the original actors who were in these fucking movies, who built the fucking Avengers, the whole MCU, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris fucking Hemsworth, uh, Scarlett Johansson, none of them were big time, prime time actors. Maybe you could argue Robert Downey Jr. was, but he, Robert Downey yes. Jr., if you remember, we talked well, about this he before. Had, he was just now <laughs> bouncing back. He, he was went just to get a high and then a low. And then a, yeah. He had been through the ringer with his drug issues, and that was all public stuff. Yep. He was not a big time, prime time actor, so much so that they took a risk signing him on to do Tony Stark. Okay. Chris Evans wasn't a fucking huge actor back then. Chris. Uh, Hemsworth wasn't a huge actor back then. Scarlett Johansson wasn't. This franchise made these actors who they are today. It would be a mistake if they were to go out and just start snatching up all these primetime celebrities to fucking be in their films. That's all I want to say. Get somebody who's well, like... I, I mean, That's a short don't, I don't <laughs> want to see Killian Murphy as Doctor Doom. Yeah, why not? And I'll tell you why. It's similar yeah. to the same reason I don't want to see Nicholas Holt as fucking... Lex? Uh, Lex, Tell us, Killian buddy. is fucking too short and he's too <laughs> fucking skinny to fucking play Doctor Doom. Well, and their stats, according to Marvel.com, Doctor Doom is two hundred and twenty-six pounds without armor. Without armor, okay. yes. In his armor, he's four hundred and fifteen pounds. I didn't know that shit. And Doctor Doom is also six-two. Killian Murphy is like five-nine. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the why mom. all these rumors are flying around. I, I just, I just like let us know already enough. But like, put the rumors <laughs> to bed. Rumors. That's part of the hype and part of the marketing, though. It used to be. That's the thing. Like, mm. I don't know, man. Marvel has just lost its way. They need to get back to it. <laughs> because it used to be like that. That was the fun. Like, oh, man, what's the fucking next thing? What's coming? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, who's going to be the fucking act? Like, who's going to play fucking this person? Oh, my God. We're going to see an appearance of this fucking character. Like, that's not that's not no longer there. It's not like you just want the truth. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, they don't even do that anymore. Oh, I see. It's not even part of, like, the culture of, like, the marketing. Mar the Marvel's movie wasn't even, like, it was barely marketed. Meanwhile, yeah, was over that. Meanwhile, Captain Marvel had, like, this huge marketing campaign that was, like, aimed specifically at, like, female audiences and, like, like become a female hero, like, all this crazy. It was, like, directed at, like, a, the female audience. And that movie did fucking bajillion dollars. So, like, their marketing clearly is something, something, I don't know, whatever. Anyhow. I don't know if you're going to talk about it, but our boy Bob Iger's back in the news again talking that shit. Were you going to mention that? Uh, I mean, he said something along the lines of we're going back to quality over quantity. That's old. That's the last thing I think I saw, but it is. No, that's a few okay. weeks old at this point. I think, like, yesterday he said some shit about the Marvels. He basically threw the Marvels under the bus. Um, he was, he oh, spoke, no. I don't yeah, watch he, what he says about his movies. What? I said, I don't watch, I don't watch what he says about his movies. I don't care what he thinks about them. <laughs> he needs a quote. I have it here unless you're about to read it. I have it. He okay. said, uh, at thir on, uh, Thursday at a New York times deal book summit, um, he was explaining the disastrous performance of the Marvel cinematic universe's latest film. Uh, he said the Marvels was shot during COVID Iger said, there wasn't as much supervision on the set, so to speak, where we have executives that are really looking over what's being done day after day after day. Um, he said, yeah, if you're executives all know what the fuck is. dollar Malibu homes fucking <laughs> wearing masks because they don't want to get sick from their butlers and right. maids. Um, then he said, calls. so I don't know if you guys know this, but me, Nia DaCosta, who directed the Marvel, she actually stopped during the production of the Marvels to during post-production to go work on another project, which is kind of like a no-no. And he said, quote, if you're directing a $250 million movie, it's kind of weird for the director to leave with a, f with a few months to go. Um, yeah, it is. That wasn't him who said that. That was somebody, somebody else. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But that movie again, it it only well, I mean, made. He's got to he's got to start saying something because uh, well, yeah, you, they, you can't continue to put out bombs and not fucking have an answer for what the hell's going yeah. on. Yeah, so, there's more. He kind of said what we said before. Like people, it's it's cheaper to wait for it to come to Disney Plus than taking your whole family to a movie. But now that's like, what he said. Some summarize. Say that again. He said it's cheaper to take. It's cheaper to wait for it to come to streaming than to yeah. take your whole family to a movie. So you have to. Well, that's what I was saying. I think the big. I raise think the bar. I think the the first big mistake was on the part of Disney, not Marvel. I don't think these are all creative issues. I think this is specifically like a company wanting too much. That's and that's what this is. Yeah, but, you can't have. I mean, it's hard to have both a lock on right theaters and streaming. Well, think because, of it on an even smaller <laughs> scale, right? Like, yeah. let's like us for instance the podcast there's a lot of podcasts out there that do like patreons and stuff like that and they offer episodes like a week early or something like that right but if i'm a fan of a why would i want i, I like me personally <laughs> there's probably a market for it but like why would i pay money outside of just wanting to support the creator that i like but why would i pay money specifically to see something early when i know that's i'll whack. get it a week from now do you know that's what i mean whack. There's obviously be more. Yeah, there's yeah. obviously more involved with supporting like a creator like that because a lot of it is about the support specifically. But I'm just saying, it's like, yeah, people are what like they're we're conditioned to now think that like, oh well, it's just it's gonna late. be out in a month. But you know that's yep. the thing. Every all these companies got like giga desperate during COVID, and they their way to make money was hmm, we'll just offer it on on streaming. Um, yep. But this story gets a little bit even crazier because uh, Iman Vellani, who plays Ms. Marvel, she was actually asked like w about like the box office issues and she said something along the lines of like, 
you know, that's Bob Iger's problem or something. <laughs> and uh, she said, I don't. Nice. Yeah. Um, she said, I don't want to focus on something that's not even in my control because what's the point? That's for Bob Iger. So I think that's kind of that. funny. Yeah. I mean, really, it's not their job to. No, I mean, they, they, they do some marketing stuff, right? Like stuff they're told to do probably, but their job is to perform on screen. That's it. Yep. Bob, Bob Iger finished. Um, I'm not sure other stu another studio will ever achieve some of the numbers that we achieved, the exec said. I mean, we got to the point <laughs> where if a film didn't do a billion dollars in global box office, we were disappointed. That's an unbelievably high standard, and I think we have to get more realistic. So, like, that's kind of yeah. like what Mark was saying. He's not wrong. No, he's not. But that's kind of like what Mark was saying on Kevin Smith's show, is that, like, there was a period of time where, like, every movie was making a billion dollars. So like it was because they set it up right, but yeah. they never followed it up after they. I mean, they got there and it was good for a little while, and then it started to flounder, and they just let it flounder, and now everybody hates it. Yeah, I what think is it like? Why aren't these? I don't know if it's the burnout thing or people just finding better forms of entertainment elsewhere. Like no, I think short it's, short it's form a lot of things. Short short form stuff is like popping nowadays. So I wonder if that's a factor too, as far as like I don't think so. You don't think so? I just no. stepped I mean, down. I just stepped down. Um, Chappick took over. COVID happened. The strikes happened. Uh, there was all kinds of stuff that messed up the production, and they wanted to ramp things up. They were um, rolling out their streaming thing. Like Disney just went through a whole lot of shit in the last two or three years. So, do you know how we talk it, about it, it? It all it all adds up. You know how yeah. sometimes when like privately we talk about like cultural and social issues, and I always say like every issue has like a root cause, right? Like crime, for instance, the root cause of that is like poverty and just the systems in place to keep people impoverished. Same thing here. There's a root cause of this, and that is the fact that Disney executives just got greedy. They're like, we got a fucking cash cow here. Let's fucking milk it for everything it's got. It happened, like Dusty just said, during a time... During the pandemic, people weren't going to movies. They were fucking hemorrhaging money, probably. And they were like, all right, well, let's start right. a streaming service. Well, how do we get people to come to the streaming service? Oh, let's give them the thing that they love times a million. And let's make it so that they have to watch this stuff in order to enjoy this stuff. And, like, that's why Bob Iger is saying, like, hey, we got to focus. We got to go back to quality over quantity because, like, he obviously recognizes the fact that, like, yeah, there's just too much Marvel stuff. And again, yeah. you know, we talked we've we've talked about this before. It's very clear when you listen to the dude talk, Kevin Feige is like a very passionate dude about these characters and these stories and stuff. He's not just going to go from fucking creating like some insane fucking saga like the Infinity Saga to just being like, "Eh, well, I don't give a fuck no more." It's just <laughs> that the dude like you can't be in like a million different places at once. You you just can't. Right. And you start delegating stuff, and then sh that person doesn't. It's like it's just impossible. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. You know, like when I like, when I used to be a manager at AT and T many years ago, like I used to do everything by myself. I hate it because I because and you guys know this, especially Dusty. Like I'm a control freak, and <laughs> and like if if I feel like something cannot be done to the quality or the standard that I have in my own head for it, then I'm just going to do it myself, and that's what's unfortunately happening. It's clear. Yeah. And again, it's not the actor's fault. It's not the writer's fault. Well, the writer's some degree it's their fault, but oh well, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Maybe yeah. they need to stop putting so much on Disney Plus. I think they and should just, just kind of yeah. dial back. I mean, I know they've invested a lot into Disney Plus though, which is the shitty thing, but I think they need to get rid of Disney Plus altogether. They won't, but I mean, not like, altogether. But they should just make it a much lower priority than it is right now. I also think they got to stop with the shows because people aren't yeah. giving a fuck about the shows. Nobody cares. No. Just well, make make I mean, a very yeah, good one off a good selection. You know? If they made the right shows, people would watch them. They're making probably. The wrong shows. Yeah, I mean, everybody liked Wandavision, but that's, that's like true. the only one. Yeah. Loki. Yeah. Loki too. Did you finish season two of Loki, Dusty? Yeah. I think absolutely. Can't, yeah. can't remember if we talked about it. It was great. Yeah, we talked about we we did. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Yeah. Um, so what else? Of Michael Waldron set to is the new writer for Avengers King Dynasty. 
Yeah, I brought that uh, up last week. He was week. the writer creator of OK Loki. He's yeah. Him. So he's doing Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty now. If Kang happens, uh, it may not even happen. Who knows? Apparently, there was some news <laughs> um, in uh, what's his name? His contract. He's the only character that can ever play Kang because he knew it was going to be a multiple, versatile character. And maybe he also knew what they did with um, uh, Terrence Howard. Yeah, Terrence Howard. So. <laughs> that motherfucker's on TV talking about like, do you, have you ever seen him in interviews? That dude's out of his mind. He's. Yeah. Uh, I saw him on a radio yeah. show. He's like, he's like, listen, man, one plus one don't equal two. That's what they <laughs> want you to believe. One plus, like, dude, what are you talking about, bro? Yeah, he's he's a crazy yeah. person. Right. The last piece of Disney news we have is not anything related to that. Uh, Timothy Oliphant and David Rizdahl. Both join Noah Hawley once again to take on roles in his FX Alien series. Uh, Hawley says production of the series will resume in early 2024. They're filming in Bangkok, I think. Uh, they were delayed by the pandemic and the strike. Uh, so this movie's been plagued for a while. But it releases early in 2025. Uh, so we got a couple Alien things coming up. Fetty Alvarez's movie, Alien Romulus, nice. which I think is what his title still that opens August of next year, and Ridley Scott is the producer on both. Apparently, he's already seen Fetty Alvarez's movie. We talked about that. He fucking loved it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we got, we got a couple of Alien things coming up. And, uh, yeah, we got some Fargo guys joining Noah Hawley on the Alien show. Fargo started. Yeah. I got to get on that. Have you watched it? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I have not. No, it's on the list. But it's, I have not. Okay. So I'll go then, good. Uh, we got a couple more. Hold things. on a yeah, second. <laughs> Motherfucker, I've sat here multiple times and told you how good it is as a show. I mean, shit, man. I mean, I can't shit, remember. man. All right. That's it. It's a um, lot. It's a lot of um, stuff I'm you guys sure. recommend. I'm saying it right here, yeah, right now. That's true. The, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Dusty knows. <laughs> this month Dusty is, recommends me something every fucking every well, time we come up here, I think. This month is my <laughs> yeah. month. This is my oh, pick. Man. And I'm picking Fargo. We're watching Fargo to, for Make Marvin Watch this month. The movie. And then, then oh, you will, the movie. Okay. Then you okay. will springboard. I was going to say, God damn, the show. No, no, no. You will springboard <laughs> from Fargo the movie seasons. into the show. Because the show okay. is based on yeah. the movie. Right. And the movie happens to be one of the best movies ever made. It's by the Coen brothers, who are some of the greatest filmmakers ever alive. And huh? I know we like to do holiday-themed stuff, but... It's not really a holiday theme, but it is winter themed, so that kind of works. <laughs> it's snowing. Yeah, that's that's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's fine. So that's the Make nice. Marvin Watch this okay. month, folks. Stick around. That's a good, All right. nice cast. Yeah. Great I'm movie. Looking at it now. You've seen um, Fargo, right, Dusty? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Come on, you're going to ask Dusty uh, if he's seen Fargo? Well, the that's show, crazy. The, and Well, just to finish, the show is great. Every season is about something different. Oh, nice. That's good. Yeah, it is. Uh, why? Okay, I gotta fix some things after this recording. Um, all right, something Dan posted in Discord that I already knew about. Uh, the 2024 release has been confirmed for Beverly Hills Cop Four. Oh, this shit. movie has been plagued by delays and disputes for a while. Uh, I mean, it goes back to 2016. Paramount. Just to clarify, uh, we all knew about the movie. I only posted because I hadn't seen a shot, a picture of him in the costume. It's the first time I've seen four? him. Yeah, yeah, we talked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four. All the I haven't seen two or the three. Get your Harsh Language yeah, Beverly no, we, Hills Cop watched, merch at harshlanguage.tv. Right. Yeah. We got a, the, yeah, Great the shirt. Tailpipe t-shirts. I still need to order mine. Hey, um, is... But yeah, so... We watched the first one. The second one is really good. The third one's kind of cheesy. They go to a theme park, I feel. I like that the third was, one. Yeah, it's good. It's just a little cheesier. Is Eddie Murphy still funny? I haven't seen Eddie Murphy recently, so. I think, I mean, I watched. I mean, the, I just watched that Cat Williams thing, so I'm like, I don't well, know if. Yeah, know. what was that? You People was good. I yeah, liked it. Dan. All oh, right, I forgot about that. I, no, I, that I ended up watching it. I thought it was funny. He's pretty funny. I mean. Yeah. He's Eddie Murphy. He's never not going to be funny. Yeah. I don't, that's what I thought and, about well, Cat Eddie Williams. Murphy, but Eddie Murphy went to those weird things. Like, he was that raw, just hilarious, like, yeah. adult comedy. Yeah. And then he got, in, he got into family. He, he was doing 
like Disney family movies like Haunted Mansion and shit where yeah. it was toned down humor and it wasn't Eddie Murphy. So well I actually I have I have high hopes for this. This is fucking Axel Foley. Yeah. So he prior fucking bring it. He better yeah, he can't ruin it, right? Well, you know what? People are saying that this might be this might be the uh top gun of comedy. Cause it like, better. what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, because the Top Gun sequel that came out a year or two ago fucking dominated at the box yeah. office. Oh, yeah. this is gonna be one of right. those, and this is gonna be that, for, but for comedy, yeah, they're bringing back all the old. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. This is the one they've been trying to do it for a while, though. Rewrites. It's and everything, different, though, but that was the, like the problem with the first one. The first one was plagued with rewrites, and they just kind of like made oh. it, and it was great. The only thing it's, I'll say, it's sorry, different Martin. though. Top Gun is like, it has the whole like American like exceptional thing behind it you know like yeah but, everyone loves the war and all that but so everybody is, loves beverly hills cop it's yeah, like a classic but, my only thing is that the before you people the only modern movie i've seen to my memory with eddie murphy was the sequel to um coming to america and that oh, was I didn't see that. that was not very good <laughs> so oh, that sucks but I don't know if that was an Eddie Murphy problem. Like, that's just... Right. You know. I hope it's yeah. good. I fucking love Eddie Murphy, so, I mean... Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I do, too. Yeah, this is a Netflix movie. I don't know. It's probably coming to theaters, but they bought it. Who's writing it or so, yeah. directed it or whatever? Uh, it's already... It was already filmed. Uh, oh, right. It was, like, 2022 to 2023. They filmed it, so... Uh, I did not... Have the credits in front of me, so I'm not sure who's writing it. Direct, uh, directed yeah. by Mark Malloy, um, Australian film director. I don't, I don't really see anything else he's done. Story by Will Beal. What is this called? Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley. Oh, he wrote Aquaman, or had something yeah. to do with Aquaman. Probably. Mm. Yeah. And what else Justice you got League. for us, Dusty? Oh, Justice League. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> Tim Burton um, still fucking shooting down calls for a Nightmare Before Christmas sequel, reboot, or anything of the sort. He gets asked about it all the time. I'm sure he gets tired of answering questions. Yeah. No shot. The movie is great. He doesn't want to make another one. He's been down that road with other movies and other stories and other franchises, and he's had bad experiences, and he's had good experiences. He's not going to fucking do another Nightmare Before Christmas Stop asking him. Stop hoping for it. He did. He did just recently say they fin. (laughs) (laughs) He did just recently say they finished uh, Beetlejuice. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's gonna be good. Yeah, there wasn't much left. Yeah, there wasn't much time left on that one. Marvin, how have you never seen Nightmare Before Christmas? Sorry, Dustin. because all the weird bitches in school was that was their whole personality <laughs> when I was in school. So it was like one of those things. I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm gonna watch this. Maybe we gotta make him watch that. Maybe right. I gotta pull back <laughs> on Fargo. That was that man, was that just like my? To, you might have to change it up. Was that my age group that no. everyone was just obsessed with, and that was like their entire personality no, was like been nightmare obsessed with that movie forever. Yeah, that was like okay. the resurgence. Yeah. That shit came out in '93. Marvin, what are you talking about? I was born in '93. Yeah, fucking just that movie's grew so good <laughs> that it transcends generations. What are you talking about? Uh, I was so watching good. this shit when you were swimming around in a nutsack, Marvin. I bet. <laughs> Shouts out to pops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, well, last, last maybe we don't we make Marvin watch is... Fargo this month. Yeah, yeah we'll it see. is we'll Christmas. It, it yeah. is Christmas. It's got to be Christmas, Nightmare Before baby. Christmas. All right. Um, <laughs> movies that are based on real stories. Ugh. This is coming out of your neck of the woods, Dan. Really? Frank Rich, producer of series such as Succession and Veep, is taking on the George Santos tale. <laughs> HBO Films what? has optioned the right has optioned the rights to Mark Quisano's new book, The Fabulist, the lying, hustling, grifting, stealing, and very American legend of George Santos. That's a long name for a book, but sure. He just got film kicked production out. Is, film is in production, and Santos was just expelled from Congress. So the movie has Damn. a beginning, a middle, and an end. 
uh, <laughs> real life tales, you know, the, the, the rise and fall of things and people. This, this is the segue morning, I can feel. Long, the, the long <laughs> beach. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. This is the segue <laughs> of real life, real life stories come to film. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Santos, he's a fascinating character. We see how interesting how the movie goes. But dude HBO is like the gayest dude I've ever seen who just pretends to not be gay. It's so fucking weird. So funny. <laughs> like, dude, like oh, what? Oh, man. He's, he's, he's wild. And there's nothing uh, wrong I'm, I'm with it. It's just like, dude, what's your deal? Just right. like, like, who cares? Be yourself, bro. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the segue. So that's, that's the news, yeah. All right. Thank you for the news, Dusty. Mm. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Well, let's get into, uh, this week's review. This is, uh, dumb money. As Dusty said, based off of the real world events that took place back in 2020 and 2021, the, uh, oh, AMC, not AMC, nope. I'm sorry. The GME, the GameStop. <laughs> uh, the GameStop fucking craziness. Uh, craziness is, so that's, that's one word to cra- describe it. I said craziness. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I said that's one word to describe it, yeah. I don't know how to really describe it. Fucking value. um, Yeah. Once in a lifetime thing that... Hey, I like the stock. Got to experience, yeah. I I made some money. Oh, it was AMC, actually, not GameStop. Well, I feel like in order to talk about the movie, we have to talk about the real-life events. So I think we talk about the real-life events, and then we segue into the movie itself, because we do have to talk about it as a movie. Um... But this is directed by uh, Craig Gillespie, and he's done um, some films in the past, like I, Tanya, very good movie, Pam and Tommy. He did the miniseries uh-huh. on Netflix. Um, he really likes his, his biopics, I guess. Um, <laughs> he also directed uh, a great movie um, that is not very well known, but Lars and the real girl. I don't know if, if well known, isn't the right word. It's got great ratings. It's just more of like a little low key, like indie film, um, okay. from a while back. It's very good. It's, uh, <laughs> that, that's actually with Ryan Gosling and he falls in love with like a doll, like a, like a mannequin or whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, interesting movie. Uh, but yeah, this is the story of our boy, Keith Gill, a.k.a. Deep Fucking Value, a.k.a. Roaring Kitty, played by Paul Dano. Um, we got Pete Davidson and his, as his brother, Kevin Gill. Vincent D'Onofrio <laughs> is Steve Cohen, the fucking, one of the fucking overlords. Wall Street asshole. Yeah, yeah. Nick Offerman as Ken Griffin, who is literally like Emperor Palpatine, basically. That's so funny, yeah. Um, <laughs> Seth Rogen as Gabe Plotkin. Sebastian Stan as oh. Vlad Tenev. Um, Vlad. And- and a host, of, a host of other people. You know, <laughs> it's funny. This is good. I was just going to say, it's so funny you having, well, we were on the, I was on the tail end of the GameStop thing. So mm-hmm. I didn't see it from the beginning to the end. I was more on the, Me the too. Yeah. last and, few months. Yep. Um, but it's funny, like just basically hate, hating these people a little, like kind of hating these people from, from experiencing this and then seeing them portrayed. And it's like laughing at them and like kind of liking them in the movie. <laughs> well, I actually have a different take, which I'll get into in a bit. But um, one of the things that stood out to me with this movie is how much I actually forgot or didn't know altogether about what happened. Because like you said, I, I feel like we all sort of kind of caught wind of it sort of the, at the tail end of it. Maybe Dusty was more into it than we were because Dusty has more He was already into investing. like crypto and stuff too. Yeah. 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 But I forgot about like all this shit that happened and like it was only two years ago at this point. Maybe That's even a little bit less. Be. Like I totally forgot about the hearing and I remember we were all like hyped to watch shit. it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, what a weird and wacky time. I mean, this was just... It was, a, ama- it was an amazing time, actually. Yeah. I mean, it just spawned, like, stuff in my life that never I would have never gotten into or, like, found out about. Like what, if trading? not for... Yeah, like, trading or just investing in general outside of outside of that. Like, yeah. If not for, you know, though that series of, of events, I would have... I wouldn't have as much literacy with finance stuff that I do now, that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm, and I, I'm grateful for that time for sure. And I think actually the movie really portrays that well, because um, 
I mean, I think it does a lot of things well as a movie. For one, it gives you a little bit of insight into this guy, Keith Gill, who sort of like led the charge um, in this movement. But I didn't really know that much about him. I didn't know that he was a financial analyst. I didn't know that he had a sister who died of COVID. Like I didn't either. Yeah. Um, I didn't know about that. And, and nonetheless, this movie is not really even about him. Um, I think it's easy to maybe think it's about him because he's one of the central players in it, but this isn't like a biopic about Keith Gill at all. Um, this is literally about this like series of events that he just happened to be a big part of. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I actually really like that um, because... He wasn't even the guy that did the original... Sorry to cut you off. He wasn't the guy that did the original due diligence of GME. Who was he that? He was just... Uh, I forgot the guy's name. You'll have to look... It's some just a more of a no-name guy from Reddit. Okay. And yeah, he just yeah, kind of... he wasn't... Yeah. He wasn't the pioneer, but he was the, big, he was the big yeah, guy. Yeah, he was the Marvin. big guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. always a stockbroker financial analyst behind it somewhere but yeah um i think like a lot of the stuff in this movie was kind of funny like seeing how like the tendies joke became a thing Um, (laughs) the bet i mean i'm assuming a lot of the stuff is true like you know with the tendies and like kind of like i'm pretty sure those videos are still up probably yeah probably i mean this was a guy who just started youtubing during the pandemic as like a hobby and he started just posting about his investments or whatever yeah. the fuck. <laughs> then at home, as yeah, so many other home, people. Stocks all day. Yeah. yeah. As, well as so many other else. fake gurus came about during that time, as we saw. Dude, so many during YouTube that time, channels. It was, that, yeah. There's so many. The whole thing. There's so many YouTube channels that I follow because of like crypto that <laughs> don't even do crypto anymore. They're like on to some other fucking scam, like though. thing. I don't think it's a scam. I just think like. They themselves are like, well, crypto's done, so now I got to continue my channel. So, like, what am I going to do? That's true. That's fair. Yeah. Um, Just riding the wave of societal change. Yeah. But, each hype thing. <laughs> you know, you talk about yeah. societal change. This was a moment where, like, so many, like, different things had to, like, come together to coalesce to create a moment like this. And uh, largely, it was driven by the pandemic. Like, you have all these people 100%. at home, like, doing nothing, not working, using the internet and like sort of stumbling onto this community that yeah. uh, led this, this charge here. And it's actually pretty amazing. It's like one of the things like we talk about all the time that the internet is like, could be used for good and bad. And we've seen both ends of it, but this is one of the good examples in my eyes um, about how like, you know, a s- smaller working class people could like fucking stick it to the fucking rich billionaire scumbags. And yeah. The name of the movie, I didn't even know this, but that little quote in the beginning, dumb money, individual investors often derided as dumb money by Wall Street. I had no idea about that, but that is such like a Wall Street fucking thing. That's such a thing, yeah. Like, And they say it in the movie. It's like, ah, they're dumb money, baby. Like, fucking who cares? They're gonna who pay. cares? So, yeah, um, one thing I didn't, or I think the movie kind of maybe portrayed it a little bit, which is like, at the end of it all, this it was a big deal and they did lose a lot of money, but it was still kind of just another day at, at the end of it all for, for wall street. Well, like, yeah. Like, Oh yeah. Like, I mean, you know, that guy, Gabe Plotkin, he did, that company did go under, but mm-hmm. he just made another hedge fund at, at the end of, of it. So. Of course he did. <laughs> but, um, and, but that's what I really actually liked about this movie. So, uh, first of all, I think the real strength of the movie is this was like, I thought the perfect like re- recapturing of that like particular little like slip of time. Yeah, they that got again, a lot of shit right. But not just with this event that happened, but this is probably one of the best movies that I've seen so far depicting the pandemic on just like a casual and like mundane level. Right, just every day, yeah. Because this movie is really less about I mean, it is very much about this event, this financial thing, but like, I just really like the way it 
it portrayed some of the other side characters in the movie of like just the everyday average people living through the pandemic. Like you got his brother who's like a fucking delivery driver because he got laid off from his job. You got, <laughs> yeah. you got America Ferrara who's playing Jenny. She's just like a fucking nurse at a hospital who's like mm -hmm. in debt by like, I think what they said, she was like $40,000 in debt or something. She got the worst of it. That was, you know, you got the two college kids um, who were just doing their thing. One of them owes like a tremendous amount of money because of her father passing away and owing money. Um, yep. You got the kid who works at GameStop and his like shitty fucking manager. <laughs> and it's all just like this very mundane thing. And I think it, the movie just really captured what life was like during the pandemic for a lot of people. Yep. Um, mm. And that, that was the biggest takeaway for me that what I really liked about it. Um, but, you know, I think the movie also does capture like what this whole thing was like, right. It wasn't really, and they say it in the movie, it's not about the money really. It was never, I mean, for a lot of people, um, the money was life changing, but it was ever really about the money. I think it, like, I know that's the meme, but like, it was really just about average people. Like again, living their lives, they're desperate for some sort of connection during this like yeah. pandemic when the world is in shambles on lockdown, mm -hmm. like they're sitting in their home um, they, they do, they do a real good job of like really making like the mask, like a predominant aspect of this movie about how life was of like, you have a little bit of a connection. It's like, put your mask back on, like mask, yeah. mask, right. mask, mask. Yeah. I, I wasn't somebody that gave a fuck about wearing a mask. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I, like I wore the mask everywhere, but I'm saying like, I didn't have a problem with it. I wasn't one of those people like, well, don't make me wear a mask. But like, you, you, you caught you kind of don't realize until you look back on it, like just how much of like a connection is lost when you're talking to somebody when like half your face is covered. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah, think the no movie facial expressions. Yeah. And I think the movie depicted that really well, especially in the scene where um, Jenny's at the gas station. And like, I think it's probably around the time when like the mask mandates were lifted and her and this dude are talking and they're both just like, kind of like easing into the conversation. It's just like an average conversation prior to the pandemic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I really liked that scene. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, this, this event was like for people, it was more than just about the money. It was about like, you know, finding connection indoors and, you know, having the chance to stick it to these fucking hedge fund fat cats who get away with murder. Yeah. I started doing, I was started looking at some of the old Reddit stuff and I think the movie, just to give the movie more meaning, it did give it did make it more about a deeper meaning than, but the goal of Wall Street bets was to make money. Of course it was, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Initially, and it, and then Absolutely. it evolved into something different, where it's like, oh, diamond hands, stick it to the man, all this and well, that. I mean, but the problem is, I, I after all that, they got obsessed with GameStop, and there's still like a whole uh, Reddit called Super Stonk, where it's just that like they're <laughs> still holding GameStop to this day, and they think it's going to go to a thousand and all this and that. Still but it's hobbling. like instead of like using this knowledge of like companies like over shorting companies or like maliciously shorting companies and looking for other companies that are being affected the same way. It's like, it's just GameStop only GameStop is right. love. GameStop is life. And instead of applying the knowledge that they gain and using it elsewhere, that's the only thing I didn't uh, like about. Yeah. They become absolutist. Almost. Yeah. It's um, like, it's, it's only GameStop. I like the stock, which is funny. It's a meme. It's, it's funny, but you know, a lot of people got burned, which they showed with uh, Jen. I think you said her name was Jenny. She Jenny, got yeah. burned. She's still holding. She was up. She was up. Yeah, she was up five hundred thousand, and then now she's in debt. Right. You know, at the end of it all, so it's like you know. Well, go ahead, Dusty. You had something to say. Yeah, I was just gonna say this is basically what you see happening is basically what hedge funds do every day. Right. Yeah. Except this was this was a culmination of like. Most the individuals now, again, it started with financial analysts and brokers who were like, I like the stock. <laughs> and they just kept pushing it. Like, you can't, they basically shorted the hedge funds who were shorting the stock mm -hmm. just to say, we can do this too. And, you know, Congress gets involved and stuff. And you see this whole, yeah. you know, you, you get the whole feeling of, well, I, you know, these are just like normal people. I'm fine for the little guy. Eh, I mean, he's really... He really wasn't a little guy. He was a financial analyst that was pushing the stock. Keith Gill? He's in the stock world. But yeah. Well, Keith Gill, so, I mean, when the movie opens up, it's telling you everybody's, like, uh, 
like what their net worth is. I mean, like he he was worth ninety seven thousand dollars according to the movie. I don't know how true that is. That's like that's not a small amount of money for the average worker. Sure. So uh, yeah, well, I mean, out of college, uh, gets a job as a financial guy, works for five ten years. Yeah, he's gonna have a hundred thousand dollars in his four hundred one k. Yeah, but he, he's he was he had to be like mid thirties probably already right. So. But yeah, you're yeah. you're totally right, Marvin. Like I think some people maybe kind of like because eventually he did sell, right? Like, yes. If it they, they it estimate was, his oh, yeah. net worth, they estimate his net worth is thirty million. Yeah. Right now, and it peaked at like forty eight or forty nine million or something. Right. So he he definitely sold. And of course, like you know, uh, fighting the man is all well and good, but at the end of the day, you also have to like take care of your family. Your family, exactly. And again, he got I, out. Good on him. I well, mean, I don't know if he sold all of it. I think he probably still has some, doesn't he? Or did he? No, actually, I think he's now. Who really sold. knows? He probably yeah. he probably does. I really don't know. But. but that's why I think the movie wasn't. That's why I keep like I, I said that the movie wasn't really about him. Like it is, no. but not really. It's about the totality of the situation and how it affected different people differently. And like you said, there are people that did get burned by it, right? Yeah. Um, A lot and of and you know. Uh, AMC too. I mean, yeah, for sure. Got burned by that. That was another one. Yeah. Um, if you're late to the party, though, that's what happens. Like, yeah. That's, that's part <laughs> of the story of the movie. Is yeah, you're on this roller coaster ride, but if you hopped on too late, <laughs> sorry about it. Another yep. thing I really enjoyed about this movie was the portrayal of the hedge fund people. Um, Stephen Cohen, which was played by Vincent D'Onofrio, Nick Offerman playing Ken Griffin, and Gabe Plotkin, <laughs> Seth Rogen. Now. I don't know jack shit about any of these people. I don't know nothing about them. I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't remember them from that hearing. Um, but I, I, they, they didn't really have much to do in this movie. And I actually thought it was one of the strengths of the movie because they're only in it to showcase the dichotomy between the lives of these like mega rich people yes. versus the lives of your average everyday American working class person. And right. like, while all this shit is blowing up, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but it was always like a back and forth of like life changing shit for like these college kids or this kid working at GameStop living in like the ghetto somewhere or, or versus like, fuck it. I just shorted another, yeah, and, shit. And another 600,000. Yeah, and every time they cut back to them, his, wife, insane. his wife's <laughs> like, what'd you lose today? He's like a billion. What about yesterday? A billion. a billion, yeah, and like he was up, he was upset about it, but at the same time, it's like you, it's nothing to them, right? And mm -hmm. and every time that they they cut to these guys, they're at a fucking private tennis place, they're at a fucking beach party somewhere, they're yep. fucking doing all this stuff, they're joking with each other, like, oh, your company fucking flew people out to a private island so they could not have to wear masks, and she's like, well, your company rented <laughs> out a fucking thing, and it was just like nothing to them. And that actually culminated um, towards the end of the film when Seth Rogen and the others were being were getting prepared to go before Congress. <laughs> yeah. And Seth Rogen was reading his fucking speech with his like PR team and everything he said. They're like, "Don't mention that college. Just say, just say good college." And he's like, "Why?" He's like, "It's <laughs> too fancy of a college." He's like, "Yeah, maybe we shouldn't do it in this room in front of that uh, with that fucking wine collection that fucking behind you." Oh yeah, it was the wine collection. He's like, "That's a small wine collection." He's like, "No, it's huge." And like, <laughs> yeah. Maybe we don't want to do it with a beachfront view. And it's like you could just see exactly. how like the PR people were trying to like humanize these dudes who are like billionaires, so out of touch with yeah, yeah normal people. Yeah, and I love how the mo the movie really made them like so out of touch with normal people. It did such a good <laughs> job of it because they weren't in the film for that long. Uh, but nope. I think yeah. the amount of time that they were in it was used really effectively, and like. I forgot. Uh, one sec, keep going. Yeah, I just forgot how much. Like, sh well, I want to wait for Marvin to be here for this part. Um. Yeah. Oh my god. I didn't think this was. Well, I I would say, for me, this movie was. Um, I already kind of knew everything that happened. I watched the hearings yeah. live as yeah. it happened. So yep, this was more like a dramatized recreation for me. So I wasn't like enthralled or as fascinated as I thought I would be. I was hoping it'd be funnier because of all the characters, <laughs> which it was fucking funny. There were some great parts in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I, I was expecting something a little bit different. 
well, I don't know. Maybe maybe I just got a little bit bored because I already knew the story and I was like, this is just a dramatization of it. But oh, wow. it wasn't as Actually, good as I had hoped. I still loved really? the movie, but really? it just wasn't. I, I found myself a couple of times I got a little bit. Uh, well, I actually. I don't, I don't, I don't remember finding myself getting bored. Actually, like, I got, I, I actually got pretty hyped during the hype moments, like where you they wake up and you know the the stock is up like 150 mm-hmm. percent and all this crazy stuff. I thought the pacing was pretty good. Yeah, and they did a good job of explaining things without getting too far into the weeds. Yeah, I thought the movie like did the terminology a really great and job. stuff. When well, this some came- of the terminology they didn't explain, but yeah, but I didn't yeah. have to because it wasn't about that really. You know, it's not yeah, like it's not no, like yeah. about the me- the me- the mechanics of investing and all this stuff. No, but, no. Um, I I actually forgot really how much shady shit went on like during this whole moment, like when the the fucking yep. when shut they got down the Reddit, when they shut got down the Discord. Totally forgot they halted trading. They halted trading again with the AMC shit like months later or well, year or no, year. Well, later. they just no. halted buying, not selling. They didn't. Right. Yeah, they didn't halt <laughs> the trading. They just halted buying. Which is yeah. insane. And it was just Robin. Well, it wasn't just Robin Hood. It was Robin Hood. That was a big one that did mm-hmm. it. But other brokerages did it too. Like um, yeah. uh. TD Ameritrade was one that did it. I yeah. don't, I don't know if any others did it, but there was there was definitely other ones. You know, it was I, a whole fucking thing. Yeah. I forgot they shut Mine down like the Reddit. <laughs> Shutting down the Reddit was crazy. I can't yeah, believe that's that. Insane. I got away with yeah. that. But um, but yeah, I I just thought the movie did. I think the movie's biggest strength was like showcasing how what was like literally life changing for some people was just like monopoly money for others, and um, yeah. Yeah, I think the casting of Keith Keith was great. I think he did a gr- really good job. He may have been like a little too like meek or like whatever mm, you know, shy like, kind of. Yeah, compared to like when you go back and watch how he is on his streams mm-hmm. and videos, he seemed a little more uh, confident and yeah, boisterous. But I mean, I like Paul Dano. I think he's pretty good in things that I've seen him in. My friend who. Uh, she thinks yeah, he's he, a great she, she like hates him for some reason. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> really? What the fuck is up? Yeah, she hated know. Home Alone. She hates <laughs> fucking Paul Dano. Something's going on here. We got to find out. She was going. <laughs> she wanted to come on for this, but I forgot I to reschedule it with you guys. So I'll be. In Did she like this movie? Or she, she didn't, didn't like. The movie? She didn't see it yet, so I'll have to watch it with oh, her. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll have her on for something else and get her take on this. But okay. um, she was excited to see this. But anyhow, um, yeah, I, I thought the movie was really good, but I don't think. Like when this first, when I first found out this was coming out, I was kind of like, well, "Why?" I was like, "Well, of course there's going to be a movie about it." In fact, I had like joked about it with yeah, you guys I mean, and friends back when this was happening. I'm like, "There'll be a movie about this in like a year or two. Um, yeah, I mean, there was a movie about The Big Short with Michael yeah. Burry, so well, there's that bound was, to be a movie about this. So The Big Short was, I think, a little bit different though, because the big, oh, yeah. the Big Short was like a global thing that like affected things globally. This was. Yes. I guess it, this is like definitely scaled back, I think, but it still is a big deal. Um, yeah. And that movie's also a little bit more procedural than this one is. Like this movie very much to me was about the people. Yeah. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's an important distinction. But when I found out this was coming out, I was like, who is this movie really for? Like it just happened like a year ago. I think it's just ago. for the, the people that. <laughs> and I don't. Know. Yeah. I don't know. It's about how it happens. <laughs> I think it's for multiple different people, really. Like, because, yeah, I mean, somebody could watch this who really had no idea about what went down, myself included. Like, I don't know all the fucking inner workings of what happened and like the series of events and how this. So, like, well, it was we still don't from the movie. Like, there are some things that it missed. It didn't really show. But it gets how, the point across. Uh, this is something that hedge funds, this is something the hedge funds do every day and they don't <laughs> right. have a problem with it. But this yeah. happened to this guy. And there's a fucking congressional hearing to figure out whether or not they're fucking doing illegal shit. Like, right. <laughs> um, these motherfuckers do this six times a day on a Monday. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and the final punchline. Well, the one, Go ahead. The, the big difference, I think, with GameStop, and they, they kind of mentioned it in the movie too, was the the amount that they were shorting of GameStop. Like, even before we knew about it, they were already yeah, shorting it, it more than, yeah. it was more than, the shares that were available to to be purchased. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there was a, yeah. an episode on John Stewart's on. show that's on Apple that was on Apple. Um, was it was the name of it? Uh, Last call or something? I forget the name of it. The problem. Well, oh, the problem with John Stewart. The problem yeah. with John Stewart. 
don't know what the fuck last, was call. last call. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. Yeah, uh, John Stewart did an episode on this. <sighs> Sorry, event. I had to get my dog in. That's okay. I was just saying how John Stewart on his recent Apple show, the problem with John Stewart, did a whole episode on like investing in the stock market that revolved around this, and like he goes into like very specific detail about like the inner workings of the stock market. And like, it's actually crazy how um, purposefully the system is set up to just confuse average everyday investors. Oh yeah, um, for sure. And, and I think I, I pulled a quote from the movie and I think it was from Keith's testimony before Congress. So he, he says, it's alarming how little we know about the inner workings of the market. And it's true because there are like very specific systems set up to be confusing. Um, I, I would yeah. encourage you, Marvin, and anybody else who's interested to watch that episode of, of The Problem with Jon Stewart because it's actually fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> and the system is just rigged against the little guy. It always has been. Pretty it always much. will be. And honestly, by the end of the movie, I, I did get a little teary-eyed during this movie. I'm not going to lie. Not because it was sad or anything like that, but because it was like, well, it was, it, the sad's not the right word. It's just like, when you see things- well, I made some people's lives and ruined some people's lives. So yeah, there's- uh, there. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's not like, it, it wasn't like a specific emotion, I think. It's just more so seeing something so big take place for people, like that, mm -hmm. and that congressional speech, like, I don't know, like we really are just like, regular people are just like set to lose basically. And that will never change because by the time this movie ends, the little closing fact blurbs and stuff like the SEC filed no charges against any of them. At the people. end of it all. Yep. At the end of it all, nobody yeah. gets charged. And like charged. I said, Plotkin just started another yeah. hedge Plotkin, fund like it was nothing. <laughs> yeah, he lost a couple billion dollars, started a new hedge fund. And it wasn't him that lost, you know, that was... Yeah, it was people's money. You no, know, because to start a hedge That's fund, people was. invest into the yeah. fund. Yeah, yeah. He lost their money. Right. <laughs> And, Essentially. And when they lose money, they got their billionaire friends to come in and throw a couple billion yep. dollars into the fucking ring. You know, Vlad, and it was like a joke, like, oh, he's calling. Look, he's mm -hmm. so fucking in the red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing happened to Vlad Tenev and like it's just Yeah. Well, his stock went to shit when his, it, his when stock it IPO'd, went to shit, but, but he's still I mean, know. well, they're no longer billionaires, the movie said, but that's I, like, yeah, that's the biggest oh wow. Wow. <laughs> so like I think that was like the takeaway for me. While it's cool to That's see, the sad part, yeah. While it's cool to see like average everyday people kind of like rallying together for a bigger cause, I have developed over this last couple of years the the overwhelming feeling that like none of it doesn't really matter what you do because like you'll never win in the end, really. <laughs> Which is a shame yeah. because I think part of what this situation in this movie portrays is that social media can be used to organize and like you know protest and like do all this stuff that like you know this country was founded on like you know i actually said it in our comments on that short somebody was like with the the, the gen z short like what the fuck has gen z done and i'm like fucking walkouts and protests and this and that and the other thing and he's like and what does that amount to i'm like dude all the biggest changes in history have been because of civil disobedience and protest. Like, what are you talking about? That's the only way change happens most of the time. Yep. So I, not I not going to happen sitting on your ass. That's yeah. For sure. Yeah. So social media and the internet is what, what I'm getting at is like a new way of doing those things. You know what I mean? So yeah. clearly it can be used properly. It's just, unfortunately, you know, the SEC did nothing about it and nobody gets punished as usual. And it's funny because in that John Stewart thing I'm talking about, he interviews the, who's he interviewed? The head of the SEC or something, Dusty? Oh, yeah. Because you watched Probably, it. Probably, yeah. And he kept yeah. asking him, like, how does this happen? How does nobody get charged? And he's just like, well, you know, we, we take every, it's like just saying like politician bullshit or whatever. Bullshit. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, those but, are, yeah. But anyhow. All our kind. Yeah, I mean, they, those right. people, they don't, nothing happens to those people. They so. pay a fine, they can afford the fine, so it means nothing. Whereas right. Right. The fucking small ass $7,000 fine. Yeah. Yeah. Fines are part of their annual budget. <laughs> um, but the situation aside, like the actual event left me feeling a little bit grim. But as a movie, I did enjoy it. It wasn't really as funny as I had hoped it would be. Um, it was interesting to see sort of some of the stuff play out dramatized or whatever. Um, I right. thought, I thought most of the acting was great. 
Uh, but otherwise, like, it was just, you know, I, I, I didn't, I thought it was good. It wasn't, like, bad. I, there's nothing really to complain about. It was just the overall, like, pretty good movie. Yep. Uh, I don't think I would ever probably watch it again, but I don't know if that's, like, this isn't that type of movie where I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm really into watching, I want to watch Dumb Money tonight. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I think it was good. I think it did a good job of portraying yeah. the events. It did what it um, wanted to do is what it did. It for sure. Yeah. It was entertaining. Yeah. It had a lot of the memes, diamond hands. She it's actually did the diamond hand things. Like, mm-hmm. it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, I, I think it also did a good job of portraying, like, people that were invested, were, were investing, and, like, people that were, like, laughing at them, like, oh, my God, you're yeah. you're investing yeah. in, you know, because his friend did it when he's like, yeah, I got 50,000. He's like, what? The nurse. How much in there? Coworker, yeah. And the, her coworker is like, oh my God, you need to cash out and all this, which obviously in hindsight, maybe she should have, but. Who's to say, but that's the it, thing. That's what this movie thing, portrayed yeah. well, is that for some people, it wasn't about the money. Like it, it really was well, about that's this. Part of the messaging, like everybody was so gung ho about following one person and he was still holding and all yeah. that shit got shut down. So you didn't really know mm-hmm. if he sold, yeah. what he sold, when he sold. And so people lost out. And that's and the way yeah. that shit goes. He's, the reality he's afraid. Is he's afraid now. Like, I mean, he 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 didn't want to be like a leader, Keith Gill, I'm talking about. Yeah. And if you even look at his Twitter now, I don't think he's posted in a while. But even when he was posting, he was so afraid to post actual, like, anything words related to stocks he's only been posting gifs like you go to his twitter right now the only thing is like fucking gifs that he's been posting well the movie says like at the end like he recoiled from social media and i mean do you blame him i mean i don't i don't because i'm sure i'm just saying that's like you know that's the power of (laughs) what uh like i guess or the power of the fear of uh being going to jail, being fined for some bullshit. Well, <laughs> that, and also there's probably a lot of fucking people that like took losses that probably blame him. Yeah. So like, I think he, I think he got out at a good time to where before, you know, before he could get blamed for a lot of that, maybe. Right. But, um, but yeah, I mean, overall it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was like super funny or hilarious or anything like that. It was just pretty, Uh-oh, pretty, yeah. it was just pretty okay. Uh, yeah. I thought it would be funnier. Pete Davidson, though, I'm not a he was huge good. fan of his. He's I thought he was good. I, I like him. Have you seen his movie, the one about... Uh... I just like him because he's a local. No, I mean, I think he's funny. <laughs> Have you seen... Got that local bias. Have you seen the uh, King of Staten Island? That was really good. Oh, I didn't uh, see that. No, I have not watched that. That's a good movie. It's about him growing up in Staten Island. His dad died in 9-11, firefighter. And that movie's got, like, shows kind of his range like he's pretty funny and could do drama i mean i thought that movie was great anyhow this has a 6.9 on imdb uh i'd probably give it like a seven i think it's probably in that in that range i mean I, again i thought it was a well-made movie like i it was yeah uh, like everything I'll probably, I'll probably bump it up to an eight just because mm. of the bias sentimental bias yeah see like partaking in the you know so yeah. I can't be objective there. I'm too I'm too biased. No, that's fair. But uh, yeah, again, from an objective perspective about the movie, like yeah, I thought it was good. I again, I think the main the biggest strength of the movie was like portraying what life was like during the pandemic for everyday average people. I thought it did a really good job at that. So yeah, yeah. I, I would give it a 7. You got an 8, Marvin. What do you got, Dustin? Yeah, I I can't give it a bump, so I have to round down <laughs> to a six and a half. Again, Ooh. I thought it was a really good movie, um, but it just it wasn't as funny. Uh, with the cast, I thought it was going to be way funnier. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the story, I already knew the story, so maybe that's why it was a little bit more of a letdown for me. But well cast, well acted, mm-hmm. interesting story, but worth a one-time watch, and then not interested in more rewatching. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, again, I don't, I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was amazing. It was just like... You know, it was just good. It yeah. did what it had to do, and that was it. Um, so, all right, yeah. I mean, you can't get like that's you know that's a good that's a good review right there. It's yep. it's a good little watch. Well, like, definitely yeah, worth it. Yeah, well, okay. Especially if you're like from, it. especially if you're familiar with you're kind of familiar with the GameStop, but you're not like yeah. super. You know, I think it would be it's pretty good at explaining. In terms of like movies that sh- like similarly, I, I do think. Uh, the Big Short was a better movie, but it's a different movie. 
and that movie has like also like a fucking dominant cast compared to these, you know so it's like a <laughs> yeah. Different, yeah it's different well like some of the things yeah but some things that boggle my mind about this one is like people still use robin hood well robin hood was like <laughs> super popular at the time don't you remember like yeah yeah i know and then they got super unpopular yeah, yeah very quickly amazing. yeah yeah but um but yeah good movie overall let us know folks in the comments what you thought of dumb money if you watched it if you haven't definitely check it out definitely worth your time um and if you're interested in stocks and stuff like that definitely watch that episode of the problem with john stewart because that shit is illuminating and fucking irritating uh, to say <laughs> the least but um yeah don't forget to uh hit us up on youtube if you have not done so already we're aiming for 1000 subscribers so uh Ooh. Dusty said earlier, most of our views come from non-subscribers. So if you're returning uh, multiple times, consider hitting the sub button. It's free. It takes like Push less the than a second. Push the button. Push the goddamn button. If YouTube's not your thing, you can find us on Spotify or Apple. Um, you can always check out all our links on our website, harshlanguage.tv. Uh, but otherwise, we will catch you next week. Uh, we don't know what we're watching yet, but we'll be here. So uh, <laughs> thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you then. See ya. Costa. <laughs>